the Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida is the site of the 25th Walt Disney World Florida Classic. Presented by State Farm as the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman College take on the Rattlers of Florida A&M. Hello everyone, I'm Charlie Neal and welcome to the Citrus Bowl and the Florida Classic, the 25th anniversary of the Florida Classic. It's the silver anniversary and for these two teams, Bethune Cookman and Florida A&M, it is not only for bragging rights, for recruiting rights, and for prestige, but it's a chance for one of these teams, the winner today, to salvage what has been a very disappointing season for both. Let me bring in my partner, Eddie Robinson. And Eddie, when you look at this Bethune-Cookman team last year, Bethune came out victorious in the game. Eric Weem scored three touchdowns in that game, including the game winner. He'll have to come up big today. Yes, Eric Reams is a real good player for Bethune-Cookman. He leads the team in rushing, receiving yards, and also touchdowns. But the last two games, he has not caught a pass. He must start early and be productive for Bethune-Cookman. Florida A&M on the other side of the ledger has ridden the back of quarterback Ben Doherty. This is his last college game, and he'd like to go out with a bang. Yes, he definitely would. 13 touchdowns, over a 60% completion rate. If he can cut down on interceptions and not get sacked, he's been sacked 26 times. FAMU has an excellent chance to win the game. All right, the third member of our broadcast team, Mark Gray, he's down on the sideline. Let's go down to Mark right now. Charlie, thanks a lot. You know, somebody early in the week asked, how do you get a Rattler and a Wildcat together? Well, add the city of Orlando and a Big Mouse, and you got the perfect makings for a truly classic event in all of college football. The Florida Classic has truly become the biggest event in black college football. For the last five years, they've eclipsed the 70,000-seat mark in terms of attendance, and since 1978, they've drawn over one million fans to watch these two teams battle. However, as far as today's game is concerned, it should be noted that Coach Bill Joe kind of put it into perspective for me. He said, this game is so big that you can be 0-10, win this game, it would salvage your season. However, if you're 10-0 and, and lose this game, your season's a bust. When they meet today, in a year where we've seen streaks coming to an end, like the Boston Red Sox winning the World Series, FAMU has never lost three in a row to Bethune-Cookman, and I don't think the Rattlers are having that. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 6 o'clock Eastern for Sports Night. At 7.30, see live high school football. See Talkin' Sports with Danny Sheridan Sunday nights on CSS. Watch as Danny and special guests review each week's games and look forward to all the big games of the upcoming week. Don't miss your chance to talk sports with Danny Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern only on CSS. Hey, kid, are you with your parents right now? Have they ever asked you about the drug ecstasy? Probably not, right? They still think parties are all about getting drunk. Hey, if they never ask, they'll never know that E is used by good kids just like you. They'll never know about those vitamins up in your bedroom or that glow stick jewelry. They'll never know that E can cause seizures, strokes, heart attacks, or death, even the first time you use it. Yeah, you sure got them fooled, all right. So, son, what you do in school today? Well, first I went to spelling, and then that was over. And then study hall, and then that was over, and then it was lunchtime, so I went to lunch, and then I ate it, and then lunchtime... The less art then kids get, the, recess, and then the more it shows. And school's over, and now I'm here. Are yours getting enough? Sounds like yesterday. Art. Ask for more. <laughs> I'll tell you, they'll be partying all night. In fact, the festivities started, as we said earlier, a couple days ago. They were... The RVs were in the parking lot, and they were tailgating uh, starting Thursday. As we look at Florida and m on the left side the kicker for Bethune Cookman is Jesus Cortez and he's kicking deep one yard deep in the end zone is Will Judson and he is dropped down at the seven yard line not much running room for the young man the freshman from Atlanta Georgia and we look at the starting lineup for the Rattlers of the Florida A&M Ben Doherty is the quarterback 13 touchdowns eight interceptions for the young man who transferred in here a couple of years ago from Iowa State. 
They're coming to the game with a record of three and six. That is the Rattlers of Florida and M. They did not have the easiest schedule in the world. They may have, maybe had the toughest schedule of any team in Division One AA. First down and ten. Doherty working from the shotgun on first down and ten. He has a man going in motion. Number 85 is Ronnie Thomas. From the shotgun, play action, throws a pass out the flat on first down and has it complete for a big gainer and still on his feet. All the way down is Roosevelt Kaiser. He's a sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida. The rest of the offensive line with McIntosh in the middle along with Brock Baldwin and Thompson at the guards. You've got Parrish and Black at the tackles. The skilled players, Pompey is the lone back along with Miller and Montgomery and again on second down going to the air this time to the near side and it's Morgan on the reception and Morgan gets it out across the 30 to about the 31. And fam you was opening the game with a no huddle offense trying to spunk things up a little bit. Let's look at the defense for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman College team comes in five and four overall four and three in the conference with Cardi Jackson Muhammad and Kirk Blaine the down linemen the linebackers. You see that along with the secondary of Oliver Stewart Williams and Nick Collins. Nick is a good one on second down. Again from the shotgun Doherty. This time hands off to Pompey. He tests the offensive line for the first time. And the defensive line of Bethune Cookman College with the running play. And he picks up about three or four yards on the play. Pompey came into the game averaging just about four and a half yards a carry. Yeah, Pompey is a real good running back, has excellent speed, small guy with a big offensive line. And with all these receivers out there, he can come out, sometimes just slide through there and nobody sees him. Third and inches, Pompey gets the call, gets the first down across the 40 to about the 43-yard line before is picked up by Ike Jackson, the dog linebacker who came up to make the stop. <laughs> The family so offense is moving along pretty well right now. Uh, completing a couple early passes. Really has Doherty settling down. Uh, you know, his thing is he's 60% completion rate, Charlie, so he knows how to complete passes and not throw interceptions or, uh, or incomplete passes. Working out a traditional set right now on first and 10. Play action again. Now he does a draw play, delayed draw. And again, it's Pompey on the carry. And he's across the 45 to about the 47 yard line. About four yards on the play. Make it three, a three yard gain. It'll be second down and seven. And now a pass. Kaiser wide open at the 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Florida AM. So the Rattlers strike quickly. 53 yards. And Charlie, that was obviously a blown coverage. A little bit confusion with the no huddle offense. And Bethune Cookman didn't have anybody, as you can see, lined up on him. Easy throw and catch, and he just had the speed to outrun the defenders to the end zone. That's a big mistake by Bethune Cookman giving up an early touchdown with no coverage. Kaiser, seventh reception of a touchdown pass this year. And on for the point after is Paul Johnson. Make that Wesley Taylor, rather. Paul Johnson quit the team earlier this week. So Wesley Taylor, a freshman out of Riverview, Florida, going to attempt the point after. The kick is up. And it is no good. And we'll talk about the fact that they've had problems with the point after kicking game this year. But it's six to nothing. The Rattlers draw blood quickly. And they're on the board with 12.40 left here in the first quarter. Kickstart your confidence and collect cool points in the all-new 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee. That's my car! Uh -uh, that's my car. The redesigned handling is flat out amazing. And this available Hemi V8 nice. is a powerful package. It's a perfect fit for your image. So this is new Grand Cherokee. Yes, it is. <laughs> Are you cool enough for it? It's the 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee. On road or off, it's on point. I 
ain't got a debate this, not in my nature. He's a little too smart, no man got a deflector. Sit back, relax, don't be near his couch. And the bounce is right on it for a bit to bounce. The new dual action infusion from Spalding. Air when you need it, less when you don't. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 6 o'clock Eastern for Sports Night. At 7.30, see live high school football. The Dr. Pepper SEC Fan Fair is the only place to be prior to the 2004 SEC Championship kickoff. It's where the touchdowns begin. It's where the showdown begins. It's where the high fives, the low fives, and the celebration begins. There's nowhere else to be. Dozens of cool SEC interactives and rabid crowd-rousing activities. A big-time event right next to the Big Tent. Kicking off the 2004 SEC Football Championship, the Dr. Pepper SEC Fan Fair. Be there. Monday night is Tennessee night on CSS. Tune in at 7 o'clock Eastern for the Philip Fulmer Show. Then stay tuned for the encore presentation of the Tennessee-Kentucky game starting at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. CSS, your source for Southeast sports. So, son, what you do in school? She walked right in, and right away I knew I'd better have some answers. You got the stuff, she says. Yeah, I got the stuff, says I. I got everything that a person who is deaf, hard of hearing, or speech impaired needs to use a telephone. What's it gonna cost me, she asks. I say, no charge, sweetheart, not if you're qualified. And was she qualified? If you're qualified, call FTRI today. They've got the goods. This week, Comcast delivers the hits you want on In Demand. You can't kill what's already dead. See them try in Dawn of the Dead. Will they weather the storm? Find out in the day after tomorrow. Gather the family for some frisky business. Garfield, the movie. All this week on In Demand Pay-Per-View. Delivered home by Comcast. Here in Orlando, Florida for the Florida Citrus Classic. At the Citrus Bowl, the Florida Classic. We're, we've got all kinds of things going. We're at the Citrus Bowl, it's the Florida Classic, presented by Walt Disney World and State Farm. So we got a lot of people involved. Let's go down to Mark. Thanks a lot, Charlie. You know, this is FAMU's first game in 20 days, and normally a three-week layoff is a bit too much, and it was something that some of the players like Rod Miller from FAMU enjoyed because he had a high ankle sprain from their uh, October 30th game against Florida. Florida Atlantic. However, it remains to be seen whether or not they knocked off the rust already or if they're still knocking off that rust. Back up to you. Well, Billy Joe said early in the week he's never known a team to have three weeks off in the middle of the season. And he said he's called a lot of coaches to find out if they've ever been in that situation. He said nobody has ever been in that situation. So he doesn't know if this is going to help them and or going to hurt them. And especially a passing team, you wonder about their timing. Yeah, that's always a factor, but they started off fast. I mean, they've completed some early passes. Neutral zone interaction defense, number 95. Five-yard penalty remains first down. Al Tariq Brown, the man who jumped prematurely. There he is, Al Tariq, out of Palm Beach, Florida. Went to Jupiter High, redshirt junior. And it is first and five for Bethune. At the 25, Brown in motion. Oh, that fumble, and it's loose. FAMU has it. At the 14-yard line, first turnover in the ball game. The Thune Cookman just seems a little bit out of sync. I don't know if they're the team that had the layoff. Here is the option. They fake the fullback. He comes around and pitches. And I think Weems may have just had bad pitch relationship because he was at least three or four yards back. And fam, you guys could have picked that ball up, ran in for it, ran it in for a touchdown. Big lineman, they weren't gonna pick it up. They just need to fall on it. <laughs> They'd have been still kicking it if it had to well, it, it, it would have been fun to watch him try to run that touchdown. And that was the man who recovered it, who was just called for the offsides penalty on the previous play, Al Tariq. Al Tariq Brown, first and ten. Doherty throws, has it Quick complete. Pass. Touchdown, Florida A&M. Ron Wright on the reception. Wow, now that was just an effort play. That's run after the catch. 
he was had first contact at about the five yard line. He was able to shake off two guys and just leap into the end zone. about any rush. Dockery has come out with two touchdown passes at 15 on the year for him. He's over 60% completions, I'm sure, so they're looking pretty good right now, even with the three-week layoff. 840 remaining. And here's a two-point conversion. Uh -oh, watch out. Not much going on. Uh -oh. <laughs> and maybe getting, getting into the end zone. Throws it up there. Whoa! Knocked away. Incomplete for the two-point conversion. <laughs> well, it made it exciting, didn't it? That was almost a great catch. He went up for it with one hand. It looked like he had it for just a minute. That was Wesley Taylor, who's the kicker, <laughs> who went into the end zone to catch it. He's an athlete. He's actually, <laughs> yeah, that's the young man who, the heir apparent to the job. He was the man supposed to kick the extra point. And he said, oh, he's explaining that. Now, here's why I didn't kick the extra point and they threw it to me. <laughs> you can see they had contact on the five-yard line. He shakes off three BCC defenders, gets into the end zone to give the, B the Florida A&M Rattlers a 13-0 lead. Now the kicker, he goes out for the pass. Lyman don't go downfield, so they were smart. And here's the, and you know why he almost came down with it? He's a punter or kicker. He knows he's, used to, one hand. he's used to going up and catching those bad snaps. <laughs> and he had the one foot in bounds and everything. Had he actually pulled that in, it would have counted for the two point conversion. 8.40 to go. We're in the first quarter. 13 to nothing. Bam, you. Dockerty has thrown two touchdown passes today. One of 53 yards to Kaiser. That one of 14 to right. And that was just a one play. 14-yard drive. They used seven seconds off the clock. Of course, it was set up by the turnover. The bad pitch. Eric Reams not with a good pitch relationship, and the ball was on the ground. Bam, you recovered. The 10-yard line is all Bethune is going to get back to. Maybe the 13 is where they're going to mark the ball. And here early, the Rattlers are smelling blood. I, I think like the fight zone goes, strike, strike, and strike again. And they've, they've struck two times, and they're looking to come at these Wildcats again with a good kickoff. They have them tackled inside the 20-yard line. So once again, Bethune took a terrible field position, and they're backed up. Well, that scoring drive led and aided by a turnover. That fumble that was recovered by Florida and m That was the 16th time this year that Bethune Cookman has lost the fumble. They've had 38 fumbles coming into the game. They've lost 16. In fact, they were considered one of the top teams in terms of giveaway takeaway ratio in the nation. They were plus 21 as far as the number of times they've turned the ball over as opposed to the number of times they've gotten turnovers from their opponents. But the last two times, the last two weeks, this Bethune Cookman team hasn't been the same team as early in the year. I think they're actually minus four. And they've changed quarterbacks. Rucker is not in there right now because he's had two bad pitches on that option early on in the con in the contest. And there's Jimmy Russell, the freshman out of Daytona Beach, Florida, in the actually he's from uh, Jonesboro, Georgia. Went to Riverdale High down there. He had a concussion against Grambling early. He's back to pass. And he lets it fly. Man is wide open. Whoa, what a catch. Touchdown. Woodbury. Play. Richard Woodbury. We have a new quarterback and a new ball game. 88 yards on the pass play. That's the longest pass this year. And it might be the second longest in the MEAC all season. That was a great play. Russell coming off the bench. Everybody thinks he's going to run. First play of the game. First, his first play in the game. What an arm. That ball is in the air for a long way. A great catch. Richard Woodbury, only his second reception of the year. And what a memorable one it is. So we have some unlikely heroes early in the game for Bethune Cookman. Cortez for the point after. And Bethune is on the board. And there's Jimmy Russell. Comes off the bench. Fires it up there. 88 yards. And the Wildcats have scored. Oh, I'll tell you. Florida Classic. Well, it wouldn't be that way. 
And we were talking this type of excitement. And we were talking earlier that the bands weren't playing, but now the BCC band is up, and that's their signature fight chant. Wildcats, and they're having a great time over there. And these guys are ready to play right now. Now remember, this drive started at their 13-yard line. They lost the yard on the first play, took them back to the 12-yard line, and then they throw the 88-yard pass. So let's look at it once again. And that's just a great catch. That's a fingertip catch by Woodbury, and he's able to break free at the 10-yard line, get to the end zone. Waku had him, but couldn't hold on. And that was a two-play, 87-yard drive. They used 54 seconds off the clock. So already we have a barn burner here. And keep in mind, the Wildcats have only passed the ball 14 times in the last two in the last two games. So they are not a passing team to have that type of a play. From the six-yard line. back get down there and have that big hit inside the 20 yard line so now fam you has to play with bad field position from their own 15 this is the worst field position actually the first possession they started at their own eight and they were down in the end zone in six plays went so, 92 yards <laughs> yeah, went 92 maybe they do better backed up <laughs> <laughs> Doherty from the shotgun <laughs> quick out incomplete near side Tending it for number 85, and that is Ronnie Thomas, the leading receiver on the team, came into the game with 51 receptions. Already, Doherty has passed uh, the ball to four different receivers. He is five of seven in that department. Kaiser, Wright, Pompey, and Thomas all on the receiving end. Here's the draw play to Pompey. And he takes it for about three. It'll be third and seven. Just a quick inside handoff. It's like a, a run and shoot play. Still want to run the ball sometime. You can't just pass all of the time. Roll Here's out. Doherty rolling to the left. He's going to run it. Keeps it. Slides down and gets the first down. A penalty is tacked on to the play. Let's see if it's piling on or face mask. Yeah, I'm almost positive that's a late hit. Usually when those quarterbacks slide, they don't like you to touch them, you know. <laughs> you, you know all about that. How many penalties did you get touching quarterbacks? Uh, after just they just a couple, but <laughs> <laughs> if he's running, he's fair game. <laughs> I think that was a good call by the ref. He did touch him just a little bit late. He took a pretty good shot on him. First down. Now, Doherty is a guy who's been sacked 26 times and had a slew of injuries. He's a real tough kid, so I don't think they're going to knock him out of the game, not this Florida Classic. But you can see he takes the lick right there, but he, he'll be okay because he's a real tough kid at quarterback. First and 10 on the penalty. And here's the draw to Pompey. Richard Pompey breaks the tackle. First down. Still running with power down to the 40 of Bethune. Pompey with a big run. About 13 yards on the play. Pompey is a good compliment. When you have all of these good receivers, Doherty who can throw the ball, and you have a runner who can also do what Pompey can do out of the backfield, it's extremely hard as a defense to try to stop this Rattlers offense. Put the ball in the air this time. Morgan with the reception for Florida A&M. Down to the 35-yard line. Substitutions coming in to the lineup. Paul Sharp comes in for Pompey at the running back spot. They're going without the huddle. Doherty stands in there. Pump fakes. Throws it. Wide open. Kaiser out of bounds. First and ten, first and goal, Florida and m And Doherty is looking really good starting off. I mean, he has over 60% completion, which is really good. 13 touchdowns. Here he works the pump fake, keeps the safety. 
Good post corner move right there. Yeah, he turned number 28, Larry Summers, completely around. Summers is a good cornerback, too. It is first and goal, Bethune. Throws incomplete. Linebacker got his hands on that one, I believe. Somebody got a hand on it in there to make it uh, an incomplete pass. There he is, I believe, number 29 for Bethune. That's Jackson. Isaac Jackson. Dockerty throws. Out and up. In incomplete. In and out of the hands of Morgan. Or was that Morgan or 83? 83, I believe that was. It was he was trying to hit that time. Or 81. I couldn't trying to see that number there. Actually, that's big number 85. 85, the tight end, or Ronnie Thomas. Ronnie Thomas, yeah. yep. That was a good route. He ran an out and up, kind of fooled the defender a little bit. Third and goal at the nine. And they're going to go for it if it goes to fourth and nine. I would. Well, because their kicking game isn't the best. He had a man on a quick post. He missed number 89. That was Ron Wright who had had beat his man on the quick post he had beaten Ben Ballard well they may be going to go for it I see the kicker coming in now in field goals this year this team is 0 for 4 they have not converted a field goal all season long this one will be a 27 yard field goal attempt by Wesley Taylor he's only attempted one the other kicker who left the team earlier this week Wes Johnson he kicked he was 0 for 3 no good they're 0 for 5 in field goals this year and he actually thought that kick was good that was extremely close to being a good kick so he's not off by much yeah but he <laughs> it doesn't matter he could have been off by 100 yards because it still was no good game of inch. <laughs> 17 field goal attempt. No good. Tune in for Sports Night weeknights on CSS. And get the story from the inside. I mean, so you can say what you want to say, do what you want to do. They don't have to love you and like you, but they got to respect you. Because my heart and my gut was in athletics. I mean, just like he is now, he, he hadn't changed. Because that's the kind of guy he was, and um, that's the kind of player I am. We knew that we were a Super Bowl caliber team. So everything's just changed so much, and, but, uh, you know, it's changed for the better. Sports Night, weeknights at 6 and 11 Eastern on CSS. Your source for Southeast Sports. 3 o'clock, where do your kids go? When I was 9, my mom had to work two full-time jobs. She didn't get home till 11. The streets were there, but for my sake, so was the Boys and Girls Club. A positive place for kids and our second home every day after school. Eddie Rodriguez ran the Boys and Girls Club in my neighborhood. Today, there are 3,000 Boys and Girls Clubs where caring people like Eddie help our children succeed. Does it work? It did for me. Support the Boys and Girls Clubs, the positive place for kids. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 6 o'clock Eastern for Sports Night. At 7.30, see live high school football. See Talking Sports with Danny Sheridan Sunday nights on CSS. Watch as Danny and special guests review each week's games and look forward to all the big games of the upcoming week. Don't miss your chance to talk sports with Danny Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern only on CSS. Hi, I'm Larry Coker with the Miami Hurricanes. I want you to meet some friends of mine. When you donate a vehicle to the Road Heaver Boys Ranch, you not only help support 50 boys, but you also receive a full tax benefit. Road Heaver has been providing a wholesome family environment for needy boys for over 50 years. Just call their toll-free number, and a Road Heaver representative will come and pick up your vehicle. Give them a call today at 1-800-741-2001. My cable company's acting different, and frankly, it's freaking me out. Call us if you have any questions. Lately, they've been using these new words like, yes. And they're on time, and they're friendly. I mean, who does that? Suddenly, my TV cable is supercharging my computer internet, and my computer is acting more like a TV. Bam, it's right there. That's not right. It's giving me the willies. That was then. This is Comcast. That's the longest kickoff return in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference this year. Let's go down to Mark Gray on the sideline. 
Charlie, you know, last year it was Florida A&M who went out to a big lead. They laid 28 to 10 at the half, but it was three costly turnovers, and Bethune Cookman is, was able to win that contest with a late touchdown. At least this year, if you're the Wildcats, the comeback doesn't take as much. However, they're still extremely emotionally flat, even after that big play on their sideline. Back up to you guys. Yeah, I understand that. When you talk about an 89 yarder, Ricky Williams had one early this year. That one was 95 yards. 98 is the record. I believe that was done by a uh, young man from Hampton University. And here's another one. Somebody trying to get the name in the record books that time on the return for Florida AM. and m That's Will Judson, whose dad uh, played professionally also. Second and they'll look at it once again. Here's the 95 yard return. Jerome Mathis of Hampton University. We've had a 98 yarder. That's the longest in the conference this year. This one was good for 95. Ricky Williams had one for 89 earlier this year. So we've had a lot of long, long kickoff returns in the Mid Eastern Athletic Conference this season. Exciting plays as you look at Shine. Alvin Wyatt on the sideline. In his eighth year as the head coach of the Wildcats of Bethune, from their own 32 is where they'll go to work. That is FAMU. FAMU with the ball. Doherty on the keeper. It seems like every every time FAMU really tries to break this game wide open. Bethune comes back with a quick score. They had the long touchdown pass yeah. by Jimmy Russell. Now the big return by Kyle Herbert, and, they, and they're keeping it interesting. They're staying close enough where they can still win the game. Gain of seven by Doherty on the last play. Hangs in there. He's already thrown four touchdown passes a day. Sprints out, throws, has a complete for a first down. Here's Doherty. That is his 13th completion of the afternoon. And he doesn't mind spreading the wealth around. Kaiser's caught three. Ron Wright, three. Joe Morgan, two. Pompey, Gorham, Thomas, and Sharp, one each. He's also throwing touchdowns to four different people. Yeah. <laughs> On the ground, a Gorham. Gorham has a touchdown reception, and he gains about seven. Down to about the 45 of Bethune. You know, every play... Every possession, I should say, that Florida A&M has had today, they have been in scoring position. They've only punted one time from the Bethune 46-yard line. They had a 12, 17-yard field goal that went awry. Other than that, they put the ball in the end zone. They've been very productive on offense. Of course, they've been helped with the Bethune-Cookman turnovers. turnovers. Yeah, that doesn't hurt. Doesn't you get the ball at the 20-yard line. <laughs> Second down and four. He's going to keep it. He's going to be a two yard shy of the first down. Gains only a yard. It'll be third down and two. It's a big snap here for Bethune Cookman. They can hold him right here and get the ball back. The momentum is once again on their side and it sways back and forth. They have a chance to close this game to a seven point lead at that point. Pompey, the lone setback, back with Doherty, who again works from the shotgun. They're going with a lot of no huddle. Quick pass out in the flat and breaking the tackle is Miller back in the middle of the field and he's inside the 20 for first down at the 19. Rod Miller, the nursing major. Here on the 32, Wildcats just giving a little bit too much room to these fan new receivers. Third and two, he just runs a three yard route and once again it's a run after the catch. Nick Collins has to eventually wrap him up for the stop. Here's the quarterback, Doherty, again keeping the ball. And not much running room for him right there. Picks up a yard or two. At some point, Bethune Cookman is going to have to play a little bit of tighter coverage. They're, they're kind of backed off somewhat on these FAMU receivers. But I don't think FAMU really wants to go deep a hole. Like, like you said, Charlie, they just like to sink and dunk those little quick plays and get the run after catch yards. Darkity getting them set. One second down and eight. 
Pulls it in the corner. Man is there. Incomplete. Nice try in the end zone. Diving for it. There was some pressure on the quarterback. And the uh, intended receiver again was Ronnie Thomas. He's had a couple out there in his direction. He just couldn't come down with them. Third down and eight. And we know that Dockery is tough. But he doesn't need to take too many more shots. <laughs> well, he took a lot of shots in this season with Virginia Tech and Illinois and Temple and <laughs> Tulane. So what's another one by Bethune, right? <laughs> It'll be okay. The season's over after the night. <laughs> That's right. You get a lot of Epsom salts. <laughs> Completion down to the nine yard line and that should be close enough for a first down. Let's see. It's very close. Now I don't think he has the first down. It's right between the 10 and the nine. He had to get to the nine for the first down. So it's going to be fourth and inches. We have a flag on the play also. Oh, it's a personal foul against Florida and M. I think it's back in the area of roughing the passer. Well, there's Doherty. Let's it go. We didn't see what happened after there. Here's the layout and the catch. Oh, that's bad. He came after the at the end of the run. After the. Well, they threw it on big, big number 57, Rodney Hughes. And I think what they're saying is he went low on the quarterback after he had thrown the ball. Right. So the pass is complete. They tackle on the penalty half the distance to the goal after the catch so it's automatic first down and it's first and goal for Florida and M once again and Bethune's changing people I would snap the ball that's right you snap the ball and get him in a penalty they got 37 people on the field you've got to snap the ball and that was like something a fire. somebody should be able to stop it with 37 people on the field right yeah, that was a fire drill with people coming in and out of the burning <laughs> building <laughs> that's right you should stay out of the building with his own fire. They had people going both directions. <laughs> there was no way they could get 11 people Ill on the field. They got to call illegal substitution. There's no There's a warning against Florida for making a late <laughs> Florida and M. Wow. Next occurrence will be a five-yard penalty. How could they have against Florida and M? Bethune Cookman was the one that was doing it. I think uh, the referee got a little confused there. He said it's a penalty against Florida and for late substitution. Why can't he have a penalty for late substitution when they were set at the line of scrimmage? Right, he called it on FAMU, and if that's who he wanted to call it on, maybe he was saying they had too many people in the huddle. Warning. But I've never seen a warning given for that. Usually it's a penalty. <laughs> yeah, that's, maybe he's being nice because there's so many people here. <laughs> That was a great play in the backfield. Big number 91, that's William Hudson coming up with the big stop. Returning starter in his fourth year, preseason second team, all-conference player, comes up with the big stop there on Sharp. And Sharp loses a couple of yards. And typical of most passing teams, they always have a lot of trouble scoring in the red zone. Don't have as many lanes open. The DBs don't have to play off as much. And it's always tough for a typical passing team to score once they get inside the 10-yard line. From the shotgun again, Dockery rolling right. Throws it into the corner. Incomplete. Collins covering Mr. Rod Miller. Nick Collins, who's missed everything in that secondary for Bethune this year. Came up with a big defensive play. He ran out of real estate. That is Rod Miller. Billy Joe up in the press box. The ball headed gentleman with the, the glasses, if you can see him there. 86 and 44 is his record. He's 5 and 10 when he was down on the sideline. So you see why he came up in the booth. He needs to come up here with us. Get a better view. <laughs> He's up there today. On a third and goal at the six for FAMU. Doherty out of, out of bounds. It was caught, but it was out of bounds. That would have been his fourth touchdown. Derek Williams, fifth touchdown pass, I should say, of the day. Derek Williams on the reception, and they're going to go for the field goal. It's the same play as earlier that they scored the touchdown on. With Corey, just a fade stop where the receiver fakes the fade route. But he's so far out of the end zone. Jamal Stewart was man covering. This one will be a 23-yard field goal. 
23 yards for Wesley Taylor. He still hasn't made one this year. Neither has the team. This one is up, and this one is good. So Wesley Taylor splits the upright with a 23-yard field low. And it's 31-14. 9-17 left here in the second quarter. We'll be back. Create a whole new environment inside your car with Formula One window film. For an authorized dealer near you, call 1-800-653-1367. It's cooler than you think. Balance doesn't solve. If you're currently in the market for a car, truck, or SUV, then don't buy new. Usually, as the first owner of an automobile, you'll suffer the largest depreciation loss. Instead, purchase a late model pre-owned automobile from the collection, Prestige Motor Car Collection, and save thousands on depreciation. Here at the collection, we stock only the finest late model cars, trucks, and SUVs, so you'll get a light new car without new car depreciation and save money. Come see the difference at Tallahassee Pre-Owned Specialist. the puppies just looking for a home. We've got a steak with your name on it. Come on down to Bill's Kayak Shop for the adventure. If you can afford radio advertising, you can afford cable TV. Comcast Spotlight can make it happen. And with Comcast Spotlight, you can target the customers you want to reach. So why settle for... Manja! When you can have... They've scored five times, four touchdowns. Let's see how it all started in the first quarter as they scored more points on Bethune than anyone has all season long. Bethune had only given up 10 points in the first quarter. Coming into the ball game, they gave up 21 here. Here's the second one right with the touchdown on a 14-yarder from Doherty. His second touchdown pass. Here's Gorham with the touchdown reception of nine yards. And then Doherty continued with a five-yard pass to Morgan in the second quarter, and then a field goal of 23 yards by Taylor, and that's the way the scoring stands right now, 31 to 14. And the crowd is pumped. Capacity on hand. A lot of people still outside tailgating and partying and buying food. And, I mean, the people are standing on the ramps. They're everywhere. To watch this Florida Classic. The 25th edition. Temperature just perfect. Here's the kick. Ricky Williams, two yards deep in the end zone. And down to the 15, and that's it. So, Bethune Cookman with their sixth offensive possession. Trailing 31 to 14. And then last scoring drive, 12 plays, 62 yards, 410 off the clock, and forced a 23-yard field goal by Taylor. Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference celebrating its 35th year this year. They started the, the football season in 1971. Delaware State, Howard, Maryland Eastern Shore, Morgan A&T, South Carolina State, and North Carolina Central were the original members. These two teams didn't come in until later on. That is Bethune and Florida a &M. First down and 10. Back Johnson, Rodney Johnson. That's Rodney Johnson on delivery. Now, Charlie, that was a strange sight right there, seeing Bethune Cookman, a wide bone wing T team, lining up with four wide receivers at the shotgun on first down. Yeah. <laughs> they look they, like fam you. And they hand the ball off. Right. <laughs> it is second and one. And again. Russell working from the gun. Rodney Johnson to back back there with him. He's looking out in the flat. Weems too high for him. Incomplete. Eric Weems, the intended receiver. He reminds me of Mark Brunel a little bit the way he's throwing the ball. Throwing too high.
find out why Mark Brunel lost his starting job a week ago to Patrick Ramsey. <laughs> One of these high passes. Yeah, Those he headache had, balls. He had to follow through on the throw. <laughs> Trust me, Weems will go back and tell him, hey, man. <laughs> I call it the headache ball, you know? You get a, get a receiver killed throwing something up like that. Yeah, those DBs like to see that high pass. <laughs> All those ribs are exposed. <laughs> See the people up on the ramp? Boy, they're here people, everywhere. People are everywhere. It's a great crowd, like you said, great weather, great city. Third and inches. Here's Derek Rodney Johnson. He gets the first down. Rodney Johnson with the first down for Bethune Cookman. so ironic you talk about that no one let's see what Rodney Johnson today has only rushed the ball three times he might rushed for 100 yards 100 times this season 95 of attempts coming into today's game that was it nobody you know super did it regularly 100 times he would attempt to run the ball here's Russell Nine time. incomplete Weems the intended receiver on the near side. So it's second down after the incompletion. Jimmy Russell trying to escape out the pocket. You can tell he wants to run. <laughs> See big number 95 and thinks differently. And so guys are coming back and he's trying to buy time out of Donovan McNabb. But I don't know if he can uh, buy that much time that 12 seconds he did on Monday night the other day. Who played here at Central Florida? Didn't one of those quarterbacks, uh, Culpepper? Dante Culpepper. Culpepper played right here in this stadium from the Minnesota Vikings at the University of Central Florida. Alvin Wyatt. Well dressed, Alvin Wyatt. Yes, always. Second down <laughs> and 10. And brunt down from behind. There's your man again. He's got a fumble recovery, and he also has a big sack that time for Florida and talked about the fact that's uh, Al Tariq Brown, the fact that FAMU had not had a lot of sacks against their opponents this season. They've had two in this ball game already. Yeah, he did a good job. Just a bull rush coming off the double team. Quarterbacks moving around a lot in the pocket, so the offensive linemen don't know where he's at. And they're putting pressure on him today. Here's big Al Tariq. Takes a break after that play. Yes, he does. <laughs> Out of Palm Beach, Florida with the Jupiter High. Came into the game with a couple of sacks. Here's a sack and a fumble recovery in this one. 7-10 to go in the second quarter from the shotgun. Here's Russell. Here's a man wide open in the middle of the field. There's a flag down. And he finally gets it complete. And it should be enough for a first down to Woodbury, the man who has the touchdown. He was wide open way before Russell ever saw him. Let's see what the flag is about. Holding against Bethune. Penalties and turnovers. That's their sixth penalty of the game. They're the most penalized team coming into this game in the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, averaging 88 yards in penalties per contest. Wow. For 78, 10-yard penalty in the previous spot. And it's John Santiago who was called for the holding, number 78. That's eight first downs. That's hard to overcome, especially against a good team. So it's amazing that they have the type of record they have when you have to overcome 88 yards and penalties every week. And now they're faced with a third and 26. So far today, they are one and three on third down conversions. That is the Wildcats of Bethune. Coming into the game on third down conversions, they were 48%. Standing in there, throws, and very close to a first down on a third and 26, and Woodbury on the reception. He has the first down, 26 yards. That's old Jonathan Summers. Oh, Summers on the reception. He's a big Number play seven. receiver. Him and Eric Reeves are the two guys who makes most of the catches. Yep, number seven, Jonathan Summers came into the day with 21 receptions. And today, that's only his first. It was good for first down up to the 49, 39 yard line, their own 39. 6.05 to go. 
Jimmy Russell steps out and presses. Has some running room. And falls down at the 42 yard line, a gain of three. I think that was a slide. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he didn't want to get hit. Smart man. <laughs> Now you can see Jimmy Russell can buy some time, so he's going to be an exciting player. Only a freshman, he's moving around a lot in the pocket. Good ball protection here. He, when he makes up his mind to run, unlike most, quarter, most quarterbacks, he does tuck it away and he turns into a true running back. Well, with a Wyatt Bone, and of course, like you said, they're throwing the ball a little more in this game. Wyatt Bone is gone. Joe. Yeah, speed. <laughs> you know, it, it's it's all about speed. You can't miss a tackle. It's six points, so you're gonna be disciplined. You got to be disciplined. There is Russell making moves to the outside, and he gets the first down. As you can see, he's a runner at the quarterback position. He's another running back that Florida A&M is going to have to contend with today. Well, he's also in the mold of the former Patel Trotman and Alan Suber that they've had here in the past couple of years. It's funny, I, I happened to do a game in which uh, I saw Patel Trotman. I thought he was the greatest thing since I sliced bread at the quarterback spot. He got hurt, and Alan Suber came in. I said, holy mackerel. Right. <laughs> got two of them. <laughs> they got two. There's Alan Suber. And then last year, Suber got hurt. In his senior year, he got hurt in the middle of the season. And uh, they had another kid who got hurt who's not in this game, who hasn't played at all this year. And I thought he was great. And now you look at Jimmy Russell. And stack that Alvin finds him somewhere. Here's Eric Weems, and Eric gets about seven yards to the 39-yard line of FAMU. Clock under five minutes to go. First half, 17-point game, 31-14 with FAMU on top. And although Bethune-Cookman, they, they just seem to hold on this whole first half, but they're still in the game. There's no quit. They're not giving up. They're fighting back, and every time Florida and them tries to close the door on them, they kick it right back open. So if they can get this ball into the end zone, be down by 10 at the half or less, they're still in this ball game, especially the way Jimmy Russell is running around and making plays. He is making plays, and he is making them exciting. Here's Rodney... Johnson on the handoff on a little counter inside. They need it about two yards for a first down. He got back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Third down and two. Ball resting right at the 39 yard line. Clock continuing the run. These Alvin Wyatt talking to his quarterback. These third and twos are a lot easier to complete than those third and 26. <laughs> yeah. Like they well, earlier. <laughs> sometimes maybe that's what you need is a third and 26. It, it offers you more of a challenge, right? right. It spreads the field a little more. The third and two is too easy. Rodney Johnson. The lone setback, and now a timeout is going to be called by Bethune. They'll spend their last one. That's their third timeout of the first half, 3.39 to go. We're going to step aside, and FAMU has the 17-point advantage. We'll be back. When I have an asthma attack, I feel scared. Sometimes my parents have to take me to the hospital. I feel like a fish with no water. You know how to react to their asthma attacks. Here's how to prevent them. Call 1-866-NO-ATTACKS. Visit www.noattacks.org or call your doctor. Because even one attack is one too many. Balance doesn't solve problems. Balance hurts people. Be alert. If you know someone may become valid, help them. How? Tell someone. Tell your parent. Tell your teacher. Tell your Boys and Girls Club director. You can help prevent violence. Help yourself. Help your friends. Be alert. Tell someone. It's up to you. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 6 o'clock Eastern for Sports Night. At 7.30, see live high school football. Monday night is Tennessee night on CSS. Tune in at 7 o'clock Eastern for the Philip Fulmer Show. Then stay tuned for the encore presentation of the Tennessee-Kentucky game starting at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 Central. CSS, your source for Southeast sports. I was only 26. 
Hi, I'm Kenny Mayne along with Dan Patrick who will now speak. Don't miss Sports Center on ESPN and Comcast Cable. If I had one of those TV rating boxes on my television, the number one show in the country would be 11 p.m. Sports Center. Okay, maybe it won't hit number one, but it'll definitely give Dom and Greg a run for their money. Catch Sports Center at 6 and 11 p.m. only on Comcast ESPN Channel 8. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. At Paul's Pest Control, you'll find over 60 Pauls, all committed to the quality of your service. We're Pauls, and we're Centricon. Paul's Pest Control was the first to bring Centricon to the Big Bend area. The Centricon Colony Elimination System is a non-intrusive termite control, which actually eliminates the entire colony. It requires no drilling into the foundation of your home, and bait is applied only when termites are detected. For the treatment of termites, or any other pest. Call Pauls. We'll get them all. He did. He came from nowhere to make that stop. He was determined that Kaiser was not going to get into the end zone under two minutes to go. That was a big gain that time. 39, 31 yards. Almost intercepted. Did he get it? No. Oh, he hit, the, hit the ground. That was Larry Summers who almost came up with it. The INT. That would have been his fifth interception of the year. And he's working against Kaiser. Kaiser slips down, and the and ball almost got into Larry Summers' hands. And luckily that ball was underthrown, because it had it been a good pass, yeah. Summers would be in the end zone right now dancing. <laughs> a minute 49 to go. First half. Good ball game in Orlando here. Little. Oh. Back judge Paul throws a flag on pass interference. I don't know about that. It looked like incidental <laughs> contact. Yeah, it looked like they tripped each other up. That's just playing football. But he may have held him a little bit. We'll have to see on the replay. That flag came from a long way. That was a back judge. Now there may be discussing discussion on whether it was a catchable pass or not. The back judge threw the flag. That's Keith Washington. Setting. Number 14, passing the defense, number 23. Those penalties offset, we played it down. So, it's all for not. They're going to replay it down. It'll be second and 10. Here's the pump fake. That's where they said the interference occurred just before we got that angle. Meanwhile, it's second down and 10. Then you had an illegal procedure penalty against Florida a &M. Second and 10 for Doherty and the Rattlers. Here they come. Under pressure. Steps out. Still on his feet. Oh. Still running. Breaking tackles. And has a first down. Doherty showing his strength at 215 pounds and six foot four and gets the first down just with determined second effort. That was just a great effort play, like you said, Charlie. I mean, this guy, he made about three or four people miss. He should have been tackled for a 10 yard loss easily. About four guys had a chance at him. One, two, three, four. That's a quarterback. Yeah, he has four brothers and two sisters. And that pass caught. Inside the 10, first and goal for Gerald Morgan. Gerald Morgan with his third reception of the day. This is a big one with a minute 17 to go and gives FAMU a first and goal at the eight. That's a great adjustment to the ball in the air. Fakes inside, comes back. The ball is thrown behind once again. And he always has that advantage over the defensive back as he gets his head around first. Jamel Stewart just could not get in position to knock that ball away. Pompey, the lone set back with Doherty. First and goal, Fam Yu. Rolling right. Throws. Man wide open. Wide open. Oh. Out of the end zone was Kaiser. The defenders fell down, and Kaiser was wide open, but he couldn't get inbounds. Doherty just couldn't get it to him <laughs> in the field of play. And that long white stripe, it never misses the play. <laughs> it never misses the tackle. <laughs> Great defender, isn't it? Great defender. <laughs> <laughs> 
And here you can see the receivers down. The defender. Wide open. Yeah, defenders down. Yeah, he's there's two officials right there looking. Definitely out of bounds. Second down and goal. They may come to the near side. Nobody there. And a flag. We may have holding on the defense. I think you will, but that was a rub route what they're trying to do. They were trying to pick. They're trying to run a pick. <laughs> so it, it may be against the offense. It depends. On how the official saw it. On what the back judge sees it. How he sees no, it. No, they did. They call it offensive pass interference. It was a pick on the uh, receivers. They were trying to pick the defender. So we get offensive pass interference. Now, will they accept it? Oh, they, no, now they're changing it. Now the, the official's pointing the wrong way. Now he's calling a uh, defensive pass interference. I know Coach White wants to run out on the field right now. <laughs> yeah. He's out on the field. <laughs> I would be, too, especially when they call it on the offense. And that's the first down. Initially. And you move it half the distance to the goal Passion with 56 here. seconds. Defense. Number 52. So it's first and goal at the two-yard line. And this has been a great game of adjustments. Early, the BCC guys were back off. Now they're running press. And now the FAMU team is starting to run these rough routes and run the pick. Gorham has the ball. Gorham cuts inside. Gorham's in the end zone. Touchdown, Florida a &M. running Gorham with two touchdowns today one rushing and one as a receiver Gorham with the run so that time aided by penalties and FAMU was able to go 85 yards itself in just five plays aided by a couple of penalties on the defense and they used two minutes off the clock 208 to be exact here for the point after it's up and it is good and we have a 38 21 ball game once again 59 points between the two teams we still have 50 seconds to go in the half what's that record <laughs> let's go down to mark gray <laughs> Thanks a lot, Charlie. Well, I'm I'm getting ready to be joined by probably I, I think it would be safe to say that this is Tom Joyner's better half. How you doing? I'm it's doing great. Very Don, well. Donna Richardson Joyner, one of the proud supporters of the Florida Classic and Black College Sports in general. Yeah. Talk to me about the significance of Black College Sports. Well, I think it's important because it is showing that we have to be physically active and that we can excel. But I think it also sends a message to families how alumni bring out the entire family. It's a celebration and who would want to be a part of this? Now everybody, everybody knows you as a fitness guru, if you will, but you're doing some things on television in your own right. Let's talk about what you're doing these days. Well, right now I have the number one video in the country called Sweating in the Spirit, and it's really about moving your mind, your body, and your soul, and it features the top gospel artists, Yolanda Adams, Kurt Franklin, Shirley Murdoch. They're singing. We're moving. It's a party with a purpose. And then I also decided that there needed to be programming. I want to hit the core of our communities and how I do that is provide programming at the churches so that's one thing for me to go and do a celebration but I now want to be able to be a part of the process that creates change so I'm excited because we're gonna actually implement the program in churches across the country Donna Richardson joining fit and trim and hanging with us here at the Florida Classic let's go back up to you Charlie all right thank you very much I had a chance to see one of those videos being filmed I got tired just watching <laughs> here's Ricky Williams at the seven yard line tripped up and down at the 25 he had a little running room and he not gotten tripped up and Ricky Williams was the same guy who knocked out the family guy on the returner so he's, he can return kicks and make big hits on and tackle so very versatile special teams guy Ricky Williams First down and 10 at their own 22-yard line with 44 seconds to go. Now, remember, no more timeouts for Bethune. As we look at the last scoring drive that covered 84 yards, a minute 18 off the clock, six plays. Now, 
I assumed on the last drive that FAMU was going to be comfortable with the lead and maybe run a couple plays and, and be happy to go into the half with the lead. But, hey, not in this game. And I don't think BCC <laughs> is going to sit here and run the ball. I think they're going to open it, open it up and try to score. I don't blame them. Why not? You can go in 10 down. Have a guy open. Come back. Russell. There you go. Has a complete near side. And about an eight-yard gain to Xavier Butler up to about the 28-yard line. Now, FAMU, they're playing their defenders. I mean, it's a big-time prevent. So if he's patient, throw these underneath routes. Of course, in college football, the clock stops once you get the first down. They can move the ball, move the ball down the field and have a chance to take a shot or two at the end zone. 34 seconds remaining. And some little rattlers. <laughs> FAMU still has another game to go after this week. This is Bethune's last game of the season. They play Florida International a week from today. And here's Jimmy Russell. He needs to get out of bounds to stop the clock now. And does he? No. Well, because of the change move, he might get the clock stopped. 25 seconds remaining. And that's what stops the clock. The move the chains is first down and 10. So 25 seconds left. Now the clock will start. Russell again, the lone back back there from the shotgun. Looking down the middle. Throws. And it's complete. On the far sideline to Jonathan Summers. But it's no way to call a timeout because the clock continues. Well, it's going to move so that it can move the change. It stops. As soon as the change is set, they'll wind the clock, and it's down under 13 seconds now. First and 10. Throws it away. It's out of bounds. The clock stops with six seconds to go. I think now you have to take your shot at the end zone. You can't play around and, and try to take one short, one short play. But with Jimmy Russell, there's no telling what he may do with the ball. He may run it, throw it, or do whatever, kick it. He can get the ball into the end zone a lot of different ways. 17-point ball game, six seconds remaining in the half. Now the play clock is ticking. Remember, the clock did stop with the incompleted pass. So that gave... Jimmy Russell, an opportunity to go over and talk to Alvin White on the sideline. Meanwhile, they're going to work from the shotgun. He's going to let it fly. There's a man out there. Incomplete. He stopped running, Charlie. He did. The receiver stopped running, as you said. That was Newville, the tight end. The backup wide receiver, number 85. So with zeros on the clock, they go to the locker room. 38 to 21 is the score. And you look at Jimmy Russell's arm. He let it go. Newfell just did not, I don't think, think the ball was going to get to him. And like you said, he slowed down a little bit. He had a step on the defender. And he could have put six on the board as they go to the locker room. But in the meantime, we have what we call a barn burner here in Orlando. I'm Matthew Lesko, and my new book will tell you how to tell bill collectors to go shove it. My new book shows you 4,000 government programs that you can use to pay your bills and get out of debt forever. Get $2,000 to pay your rent or mortgage, or $600 to pay your phone bill, or even $7,000 to pay your credit card bill. I've been researching government grants for over 25 years, and government officials don't even know about these programs. And you've never seen a book that's so easy to use. Here's a program to pay for your prescription drug bills, or a program to pay for your living expenses, or programs to pay for your housing bills, apartment bills, or even your student loans. Over 80% of the people in the United States, including millionaires, are eligible. Isn't it about time you get rid of your debt once and for all? If you don't use these programs, somebody else will. So call now and get free money to pay your bills. Call 1-800-309-8811 now. This is my friend Rob.
Dodgeball all new season two, Thursdays at 10 on GSN, the network for games. Visit x1015.com to register to play Extreme Dodgeball for a pair of tickets to the UF game. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. At Paul's Pest Control, you'll find over 60 Pauls, all committed to the quality of your service. We're Pauls, and we're total pest service. Whether it's ants, roaches, termites, or any other pest, Paul's Pest Control has the most skilled technicians in the area to handle your pest problems. And we have affordable monthly, bi-monthly, and quarterly service programs designed to keep your home or business pest free. For the treatment of termites or any other pest. Call Paul's. We'll get them all. What is the most influential time in a child's life? Age six, eight, 12. Actually, it's between three and eight every afternoon. That's the time a kid is most likely to get into trouble. Or worse. Which is exactly why that's the time the Boys and Girls Clubs open their doors and their arms to kids all over the country every day. When kids walk into these clubs, they're surrounded by people who care what happens to them. Adults who make sure these children continue to learn and grow long after the school bell rings. But there's still thousands more kids who need our help. Thousands of kids who need help to prepare for a positive future. Please help keep these doors open. Support the Boys and Girls Clubs. The positive place for kids.
Culture band formation. band formation. Our director of bands, Dr. Julian E. White. From the pen of Lindsay B. Sargent. One word, Charlene.
this break is for Frontline Promotions. Marching 100 back with the second half from the Citrus Bowl in Orlando in just a moment. 30 great legends of Georgia Bulldog football in one room for one full day. Telling the stories that made the Georgia Bulldogs one of the best college football programs in history. And that's exactly what happened. I pointed at Lindsey, the linebacker kept moving, gave me a nice little lane to get him the ball, and I let Lindsey pick it up from there. I just ran like hell. <laughs> Me getting hurt was no big deal. Because there was a lot of people that got hurt. So yeah, I didn't know you dislocated shoulder for the bad. Ran on the field and ran the ball 35 times with a dislocated shoulder against Notre Dame, and we won the national championship. Never fumbled and gained 150 yards against the defense that had not given up 75 yards the entire year. 30 Georgia football legends and a once-in-a-lifetime gathering can now be in your living room with this special TV offer. For just seven. $79.80 plus shipping and handling. You can own a piece of Georgia football history. Order yours today. Football's in the air, and football means tailgating and parties around the TV. After 35 years, Lindy's Chicken is as much a tradition as tailgate parties with our award-winning, mouth-watering chicken wings from 10 to 100 pieces for your hungry, fun-loving crowd. Of all the chicken in the world, Lindy's is the best. You know it, and so do we. Stop by before the next game or anytime. Lindy's Chicken, take it home. Lindy's Chicken, you're gonna It's here with all kinds of accessories for your truck, car, van, or SUV. Truck options. More products for any vehicle than anyone else. Save now with our celebration. If it goes on or in your vehicle, Truck Options has it. Now's the time to accessorize, glamorize, and personalize. And Truck Options is the home for leading brand names like Lear Toppers, Rhino Sprayed on Bedliners, and Wells Cargo Trailers. Truck Options, the truck accessory superstore. For uh, young students, both at Bethune-Cookman College and FAMU, so we're just pleased to be the title sponsor. So, in your impression, well, from your perspective, what does the future hold? Well, the future holds, I think, continued greatness. We're very proud to continue to uh, be the title sponsor of the Walt Disney World Florida Classic Brutal 2005 game. We're looking forward to having that to be an ongoing relationship, as it has been for the several years so far. So, we're just very excited. And in addition to football, you're also involving the alums now. Don't tell us the outcome, but and, you know, 
know, the alumni event seems to have been a, an extreme success. Well, you know, this this weekend actually began on Thursday with the President's Scholarship Gala, where a lot of those alumni were present at our Disney Contemporary Resort, um, celebrating the two schools. So it's been a fantastic weekend, and, you know, we got love for all the alums, both near and far. Well, I'm sure the folks with the Florida Classic have a lot of love for Walt Disney World. This is Eugene Campbell, who represents Walt Disney World, and let's go back up to you, Charlie. All right, thank you very much. Of course, first half full of excitement. Both teams putting up 59 points in the first half alone. So let's look at some of the highlights from that first half. Of course, Florida and M got the opening kickoff and went right down the field, a six-play, 92-yard drive. And Ben Doherty, one of his four touchdown passes in the first half. And that was right on the reception. That made it 13 to nothing. Here's a great catch by Russell. Uh, from Russell, 88-yard pass reception that time by Woodbury. And then here we go with the kickoff return. This one goes 95 yards. This was Herbert down the sideline. That made it 28-14. This was in the second quarter. Bethune down 14 points. But then FAMU comes back. Gorham with a two-yard run. And that's the way it goes as the second half kickoff fielded at the seven yard line by Ricky Williams. Williams has a little seam over there, breaks a tackle, and is down at the 20 yard line. <laughs> wow, Ricky Williams has been close to breaking one all day. If they kick off a couple more times, he may get in the end zone. That's right. Here's some of the stats from the first half. Anything that jumps out at you? Well, I think the biggest thing is the rushing yards by BCC because they've come into the game with a wide bone. We want to run the ball, establish the run, but they've passed for 173 yards and only run for 59. The other big thing is the turnovers by BCC, which had the short field for FAMU, and that's really the difference in the game, those two turnovers. And uh, Bethune gets the ball to start the second half. We're just getting underway. They were threatening just before halftime. They could have cut into this FAMU lead. And let's see if they can move this ball down the field from their own 31 yard line. Here's a pass to Weems in the flat. Weems gets about six yards on the play. Great way to start the second half. Jimmy Russell goes to the big time receiver, Weems. Weems has caught five passes today so far. Here's the fifth reception. He's also run the ball once for 19 yards. And a touchdown. So it'll be second down and four after the six-yard gain for Eric Weems. Bethune-Cookman came into this game five and four. They're trying to stay two above 500 if they can come out and win this one. Bam U, of course, started three, came into the game three and six. Had some tough op opposition this year. That's Rodney Johnson on the carry. Bethune started the season. They were supposed to play Savannah State. That was wiped out because of a hurricane. Then they beat Arkansas Pine Bluff. They lost to Grambling by one point. They beat Norfolk State, Morgan, and Delaware State. So they started the season actually 4-1. and one, But they've lost three of their last four bowl games. They lost to South Carolina State. They beat a and Lost to Hampton. And lost to Howard. And they've had a lot of adversity this year. The Hurricanes wiped out a lot of uh, practice time. Of course, Coach Wyatt has said his team, as far as he's concerned, as Rodney Johnson gets the call, has not been in Wyatt conditioning shape to play this season. Uh, they lost a lot of school time because of uh, the Hurricane. In fact, they, they lost the player due to the hurricane because they were out of school. Uh, young man, Kovinsky Pierre, 18-year-old freshman, along with uh, Willie Jackson, a teammate, were going home or coming back to school, I believe it was, uh, after school had been let out because of the hurricane. They were involved in a very serious automobile accident. Uh, Pierre was killed in the accident. Uh, Willie Jackson lost his leg in that accident. In fact, Willie's in attendance here at this game this evening. So a lot of adversity has hit the, the Boone-Cookman Wildcat team this year. A lot of parents uh, lost homes or roofs on homes. In fact, some of them still have not gotten roofs back on their houses as of today. And that hurricane happened way back in September. Right. It's been a, a big season, first, like you said. But this team has shown a lot of perseverance. They've come back every time. And something knocks them down, they bounce right back. Like you said, with the terrible automobile accident, just so many things going wrong, the hurricane. But parents are still here today and, and literally don't have a place to live, still don't have their houses under repair. 
And so you have to give this team credit. A lot of credit goes to Coach Wyatt and his whole staff just to keep everything together. So being down 17 points is really nothing, nothing to no. them. I mean, when you look at everything they have to come through as far as a perseverance factor. Second down and five. Russell, who did not start the game but came off the bench and fired the team up and quarterback is running down the left side, trying to get to that first down marker. And it's going to be very close. But the Wildcats are really just putting everything out on the field today. Like you said, Coach Wyatt admitted that his team wasn't in great condition. They don't have delays going into the third and fourth quarter. Plus, they've been banged up. Yeah, they've been banged up. I mean, four or five quarterbacks get injured. That's unheard of. And you pull out Jimmy Russell, who is a, a walk-on freshman, who's in here throwing for 175 yards in the first half out of nowhere. Didn't even start the game. So a lot of guys just stepping up and trying to win this classic, and that's the biggest thing that they're looking forward to right now. Russell, co-rookie of the week in the MEAC in their game against North Carolina A&T as we get a flag on the play. As far as penalties in this game, uh, Bethune has been penalized seven times, and that was all in the first half. Bam, you only twice, and of course this is the eighth penalty against Bethune Cookman I said they averaged 88 yards a game in penalties they already have over almost 200 yards I'm correction let me make that let me say that again they have almost over 50 yards in penalties in uh, in this particular game so they're right on pace Charles yeah. <laughs> it's not something you want to be proud of leading the conference in penalties but you're consistent yeah that's <laughs> if, if nothing else now they're going to have to call a timeout because they weren't sure of the formation they wanted. They spent most of their timeouts in the first quarter early in this contest, and now they've had to use one, and Alvin White not happy about the fact that they have to use one here today. We say that uh, Florida and m has one more game left after today, and that is against uh, Florida International next week in Miami. They'll play them in the orange blossom classroom. So. You know, we talked about some of the activities that took place this week. They had the President's Scholarship Ball. They also had a big luncheon yesterday at Tico Field, which is right behind where we are. Here's Coach Billy Joe and uh, the Bethune Cookman squad that came in and they took part in a, a barbecue lunch. And there's the the brooch, the big brooch of the Wildcat on Coach Alvin Wyatt. And, uh, good time had by all. And there's. The MC for the event, a Bethune Cookman grad, Rod Z, who's a famous uh, comedian, and uh, some of the people in attendance for that event. The coaches' luncheon yesterday, a fair head by all. This is truly a, a big celebration for the whole city of Orlando, pretty much statewide, because you have a lot of people who may not be alumni from either school who still come and tailgate outside, participate in the game. So it's really just a, a big celebration for the schools and the whole state of Florida. Third down and seven. After that penalty, pass caught. Butler at the 15-yard line. There's no way he was supposed to catch that pass, was it? Well, at first, you know. Too high. Well, I wasn't worried about being too high. I was worried about why the defender couldn't, couldn't the defender knock him down. That was what I was concerned about. That's when I said he should have scored. Brandy, the freshman defensive back, had a chance at it and didn't knock it away. Well, the one in or front of him, the back. one in front of him missed time to jump, right. and the one behind him fell. fell. So, right. Kwaku. <laughs> luckily, the third and fourth guy made the tackle. First down and ten at the 25-yard line of FAMU. But Thune has taken this second-half kickoff and driven down the field. This is the seventh play of the drive. Here's Jimmy Russell with some room on the left side. He's going to take off and run. He falls down. He knew he was getting ready to get clobbered. And now they call a penalty. Wow, that may be excessive celebration. I don't well, think that's all he One for the hit. Yeah, because, you know, you can't make the man stop his run to the defender or to the running back. In this case, it was the quarterback. Dead ball, personal foul. They call a personal foul. Wow, that's a big penalty. Well, how's how's a personal yards. foul after the play? Well, I think it's excessive celebrations what the call is going to be. Um, he led with the head, but he didn't make contact. But that right there, like that stuff like what the band was doing at halftime, <laughs> that's what the penalty is. <laughs> What did he 
he called. He said personal foul, but he didn't say what it was. Yeah, he didn't say whether it was the late hit or the, the celebration. It wasn't a late hit. But it must have been the excessive celebration because the dead ball had to occur after the play. Exactly. I know Coach Wyatt to take it. Unless they're saying that when the quarterback spit, they blew the whistle, and then he hit it. And that's the only thing I can figure in that particular incident. That is Keith Williams, junior from Mount Vernon, New York, who was whistled for the uh, personal foul. First down and 10 at the 14-yard line for Bethune. Rodney Johnson going to the right side, tries to cut it back, and a flag goes down. Rodney Johnson is taking on the bulk of the carries. Holding against Bethune. Another penalty. Another penalty. Their ninth. Offense. Number 74. 10 yard penalty from the previous spot. Remains first out. That's the center, Chris Olin, who came up with the holding penalty. And let's look at the quarterback, Jimmy Russell, what he's done today. He's rushed for 55 yards on 13 attempts, and he can take off and he can run with the best of them. Freshman who suffered a concussion against Grambling in the second game of the season after winning the game for them at Arkansas Pine Bluff, their first game of the year. Here's a long throw out in the flat, complete. And Jonathan Summers picks up yards down to about the 15 yard line. 15 to 16 yard line. That was a second and 12 play. They still have to get to the four yard line to get a first down. All right, but that's oh, it is second and 12. I'm sorry. They have to get to the four yard line. For first down and 12. The ball is resting at about the 16. Johnson the lone setback. Weems. Wing to the right. Complete. That one was way too high. I don't think anybody on the field could jump up and catch that pass. He said Russell, 11 of 17, or make it 11 of 18 in the passing department. And he's had a tendency to let that ball float on him today. He just hasn't been able to follow through completely. Finish that motion and a throw strikes in the chest, but his receivers are doing a good job of still making the catches even when he puts it high. That one's just a little bit out of reach. Well, 215 yards. Remember, one of them was an 88 yarder. That helps the average. Yes, it does. <laughs> as far as yards are concerned. Going to the air there again as the middle was wide open. He thought, and it closed very, very quickly. The middle was open for a moment. And big number 95, who's been all over the place, Al Tariq Brown, helped close it very quickly, along with 35, Mike Foreman there. Yeah, Mike Foreman did. He just pretty much spied the quarterback. He didn't drop in the coverage. He didn't pass rush. He just let the quarterback, when he decided to run, then he stepped up. When the quarterback saw the lane, he saw the same lane, and he closed it down. So a good adjustment by Fam, realizing that they have a scrambling quarterback on their hands. 35-yard field goal by Gomez. The kick is up. Just made it the distance, and it's good. Boy, it was a low one. The uprights, and that's all that matters. So the Duke puts three more points on the board, and we have a 38 to 24 ball game with 9:01 remaining in the third. Your confidence and collect cool points in the all-new 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee. That's my car. Uh -uh, that's my car. Ooh. The redesigned handling is flat out amazing. And this available Hemi V8 nice. is a powerful package. It's a perfect fit for your image. So this is a new Grand Cherokee. Yes, it is. <laughs> Are you cool enough for it? It's the 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee. On road or off, it's on point. Hello, I'm Dennis Thomas, Commissioner of the Mid-Eastern Athletic Conference, home of 11 outstanding and prominent 
historically black colleges and universities in America. Me, I got athletic programs excel at the highest level. However, success in the classroom is just as important. All of our institutions provide students an academic environment that enables them to succeed. Support your favorite NEAC team. We are educating student athletes for the game of life. Get into the crunch. Deliciously marinated juicy crunch. Only at Church's Chicken. Churches. Get ready for an epic battle and see colleges battle out their skills, style, and beat to be the first king of crunch. The crunch experts at churches present Crunch Battle of the Bands. Check out what's crunching at houseofcrunch.com. Gotta have that crunch. Churches. Interesting, and you brought out a point there, Eddie, doing the timeout. There's been only two punts in the whole game. Florida AM punted on their second possession. The Bill punted on their first possession. Every other time, the teams have been in some type of a scoring position. And that's why we have the points we have. One side kick. Bethune Cookman's ball. And I think Bethune may have come up with it. Let's see. Great call by Coach Wyatt. Yes, indeed. Yep, ball went 10 yards. The so kicker recovered it. The onside kick is recovered by Cortez. There's, there's Cortez, the, the kicker. As you can see, there's, there's not a FAMU guy in the picture. Everybody's taking off running. You block the first two middle guys, kicker makes that play easily. So great call, great field position for Bethune Cookman, the ball at their own 47 yard line. Remember, Florida and M has not touched the ball here in the second half. That first drive that ended in a field goal took up five minutes and 51 seconds, and now they have the. But they may hold the ball the whole third quarter. That is Bethune. And you're going to start having a worn out and a tired family defense. Because remember, they've been chasing Jimmy Russell around. Yes, they did. Midway of the first quarter, so that can make a difference. That's a challenge. Russell hands off. It's Rodney Johnson. Rodney came into the day's game with 384 yards. He's already rushed six times. So he has, or so seven times, he has 102 attempts in rushing this year. Here's our student athlete of the game presented by Russell Corporation. Eric Weems with a 3.3 grade point average in physical education for the Wildcats of Bethune Cookman College. We have a player down on the field for the Rattlers of Florida and m You know, we talk about defense, a great defense, and what these teams have done. The MEAC has three candidates for the Buck Buchanan Award that's given to the outstanding a defensive player in 1AA, Kevin Talley, the senior linebacker over at Norfolk State, who leads the nation. The tackles with 135, averaging 15 tackles a game, along with Justin Durant, sophomore linebacker from Hampton, number two tackler in the MEAC with 98 tackles. Antoine Buffet, the junior free safety from Howard University, is the number five tackler in the MEAC. The MEAC has also claimed the award. Claimed the award Two other times, Eddie, uh, two years ago, Rasheen Mathis, uh, defensive back for the field, and the 97, Chris McNeil, defensive back for North Carolina a &T. Unfortunately, when you were playing, they didn't have the award because it's only 10 years old. You might have been a, a candidate, right? I think I would have been a candidate, but like you said, it wasn't founded. Yet. <laughs> We'll take a timeout here. 8.42 remaining here, third quarter. 14 point game. Plastic ones last longer. Pork belly's closed steady due to speculation that demand for bacon related products. Read me this one, Daddy. Okay, honey. The less art kids get, the more it shows. Are yours getting enough? Art. Ask for more. AmericansfortheArts.org. 
It's important to talk to your kids about the consequences of drinking alcohol. Some kids make the wrong decision, no matter what your child's interests are. Whether they play sports or read or skateboard or play guitar. They hang out with friends and are faced with the decision to drink. It's not an act of distrust or an invasion of privacy. It's an act of love and respect. Talk to your kids about alcohol. It's your job to help them make the right choice. 38-24, second down and five. 8.42 remaining third quarter. Bethune with the ball after recovering the onside kick after hitting a field goal by Cortez. Here's Jimmy Russell. Weems at the 40. Weems down at the 34-yard line. On the reception, first and 10. Bethune-Cookman College. And Eric Weems picks up another reception on the night for him his seventh of the day remember Weems had the big game last year of course scoring that game winner against FAMU and he's really heating up the second and third quarter that's a good ball by Jimmy Russell right there he follows through with the throw throws it in the chest not a high pass as he's been doing earlier in the game you know Bethune went to the NCAA tournament last year the NCAA 1AA playoff as a at-large team and he caught 11 passes in that game against Florida Atlantic for 124 yards. Wow. So he's a big time player in big time games. He might have, he might have been fumbled. He might have fumbled the ball. And I think Florida AM has it. His arm was up in the air. Was it going forward? Chris Chanel with the fumble recovery. Trying to hold on to it a little bit too long. He was in trouble couldn't decide if he wanted to run or pass and it just kept standing there and the rush got him. So the third That's turnover of the ball game and it's a fumble. Let's see if Bam you can capitalize. Was the arm going forward? No, it wasn't. He took a shot right there. So when he didn't dislocate his shoulder there. He's not, he's not a big guy. He's only a freshman. So remember, physically he's not mature as some of these other guys. So he's not a real big guy. You could tell. That's just getting slammed on your back. <laughs> and that can hurt. So the third turnover of the ball game for Bethune Cookman. And that gives Fam Yu the ball first down and 10. Their first possession of the second half. And it doesn't come, it comes with under eight minutes to go. So that means Bethune held the ball seven minutes in the first in the third quarter here. Seven minutes before fam you ever touched the ball. As you look at the coaching adjustments, Charlie, going into the second half, the Bethune Cookman defensive backs are playing bump and run on the fam you receivers. They're not giving up those little short catches that there were early in the half. So they're going to have to run the ball and run some deeper routes. So see what the adjustment that fam you will make. It's a little spread out to the left. Pass down the sideline and complete good defense on the play. Good defense. Kyle Herbert. Herbert has a touchdown on the re kickoff return, 95 yards. He's stood step for step with Ron Wright, the intended receiver. You see the stats on Ben Doherty. Four touchdown passes is just one shy of the record in this Florida Classic that was set by Pat Bonner. Keep in mind, that's 269 yards no, in the no, first no, half. No, they no, haven't no, touched no, the ball no, in the third quarter. Right. This no, no, four no, touchdown no, passes no, out no, the first half. Right. Pat Bonner did it in 1998 no, in this contest. 7.22 to go. There's the out and up Kaiser. Oh. So that's five. He just tied Pat Bonner's record of five touchdown passes in a contest here in the Florida class. But they're running, they're running up and, up and out routes because Bethune Cookman is playing press coverage. The safety was in position. He went for the ball. He should have just went for the big hit and just knocked everybody down. The great catch. And stayed in bounds. Stayed in bounds. 
more important. That's the second long one to Kaiser today. The first one was a 53 yard to Kaiser early in the contest, and then this was 66 to Kaiser. So Kaiser with two big catches, he had a 72 yard reception against Virginia Union. So he's used to stretching him out. First one, of course, he wasn't covered. There was a blown coverage but on this one. He earned this one. It was a great throw, great catch. He stayed in bounds. He was right on the edge, and he was able to make it into the end zone. Well, somebody is uh, needs some water out there for whatever reason. Oh, there's a player shaking up on the sideline for Bethune Cookman, number 14, who was one of the uh, defenders. Nick Oliver, junior out of Atlanta, Georgia, number 14. He was shaking up, going after trying to make that AINT. One of the quarterbacks. He also had help from Larry Summers over there, but. Either one of them can get it to go. So here we go for the adventure of the day. The point after touchdown, Wesley Taylor for Florida AM, trying to stretch the lead to 45 24. It's up, it's close, and it's good. <laughs> so 45 24, 70. Nine points between the two teams. Three plays, 67 yards. PAT is good. And FAMU stretches its lead. Experience a total system meltdown. I'd like to lose all of my music files. I would really love to get a virus and give it to all my friends. Millions of Americans are just asking for a computer virus because they're not nearly as protected as they think they are. I'd like it if someone stole my identity. That's why America Online now gives away virus protection to all our members. Absolutely free. That'd be great. Thank you. Want a better internet? You belong at America Online. Today, we're doing self-portraits. But I want you to paint your soul, to liberate your minds. Show me what's inside you. Oh, now that's what I'm talking about. The restyled new 2005 Jeep Liberty. If it's in you, put it out there. to the crunch deliciously marinated juicy crunch only at church's chicken churches get ready for an epic battle and see colleges battle out their skills style and beat to be the first king of crunch the crunch experts at churches present crunch battle of the bands check out what's crunching at houseofcrunch.com churches Fifth touchdown pass of the day for this young man, Ben Doherty, who has two brothers who are playing college ball at Saginaw Valley out in the Midwest. And here's Mr. Kaiser with his second long touchdown reception of the afternoon, and his team leads it 45-24. Let's go down to Mark. Thanks a lot, Charlie. Well, you know, I think the folks in the MEAC might be lucky that Pam, you had six 1A opponents. So when facing Ben Doherty, this is the second time this year he's thrown as many as four touchdown passes. The first time was against Savannah State back in uh, October, where he threw four touchdown passes. So Coach Wyatt was talking about Pam, you looking their chops. Waiting for one double-A opponent. I don't know if the entire team was, but it certainly looks like Ben Dougherty was this evening. Back up to you. Not only did he throw for four in that game against Savannah, he ran for two more. So he accounted for six touchdowns against Savannah State. Here's Ricky Williams. Trying to turn the corner. Got a little running room over there, but he runs out of real estate. He goes out of bounds. And he's upset that he didn't get more. You know, Look at that scoring drive with three plays, 67 yards. That's 15 points off the turnovers for Van Buren. It'll be 30 points on the board instead of 45. But, you know, the scouts have been looking at it. One of the things that they see, if anything, that they feel maybe he lacks is the strong arm to throw the long pass. But I didn't see any problems tonight. I think sometimes the strong arm to throw the 
deep ball is overrated because it's all about timing. If you throw it when the guy's at 15 yards, you can time it up and you can catch it at 40, 45 yards. Right, right. At their own 23, Bethune going to the air. Weems has it! And Weems is down inside the 40 at the 37-yard line. There we go with the perseverance once again. Whenever it seems like family was ready to put this game away, Bill <laughs> Cookman responds right back <laughs> and sees the put in the end zone and say, hey, not yet, Rattlers. And coming up with the big, big, uh, let's see who came up with that stop down there. Saved the touchdown, number 35. That's Mike Foreman, the defensive back out of Pahokee, Florida. First down and 10. 6.43 remaining third quarter. One again, Russell up top. Wide open. Incomplete. Interference. They're going to call interference against Devin Richardson, who was covering Jonathan Summers. Now, remember, in college, they don't put it at the spot. It's only a 15-yard penalty for pass interference. Donnell Levers, one of the officials, who is the side judge, made the call. Jimmy Russell is showing great touch on the deep passes also. The guys really putting in there in the great spot where the receiver can catch it. And the pro level, that ball would have been at the spot of the, inter uh, the interference. The college is only a 15-yard penalty, but it is an automatic first down. And so now the ball has moved down to the 22-yard line. We're going to be first down and 10 anyhow with 6.35 to go. Here's Devin Richardson. He credits Jimmy Russell with the completion. He's 14 of 21, 270 yards and a touchdown today. Steps out of the pressure, has some running room on the right side. Down inside the 10. Hit down at the 9-yard line, shy of a first down. Or he may have the first down. I'm sorry. He did get the first down. He had to get to the 11. He'll get the first down. It'll be first and goal at the 9. But Dylan Cookman seems to be able to match scores with FAMU. They just need one or two stops. Or turnovers. But something. They need to get the ball back quick. Well, like I said, if you, you know, you take away the two, the 15 points that FAMU has been able to get off of, off of uh, turnovers, and you've, you've got a pretty good ball game. It's a good ball game anyhow. You've got 69 points on the scoreboard between the two teams. Dockery may need two or three more touchdowns to win this game the way Bethune <laughs> Cookman is coming back. There's it. Threw it behind him. Threw it behind him. Uncatchable. Defender was making sure he didn't <laughs> go far. He caught it. Devin Richardson had just got whistled for the Pass interference covering Jonathan Summers. Summers, uh, Richardson, I should say, the defensive back, was a running back a year ago. Now we've got a player down for Bethune. Cookman had problems. He was trying to get off the field, big number 69. Big Fred That's Nolan. Fred Nolan, the left guard, who transferred out of Louisville. There he is there. He's uh, ailing a little bit. You know, we talked about Florida and m and their schedule this year. You know, they started the season with a loss to Illinois. They beat, played Tulane, Temple. They were 0-3 before they played Tennessee State. And uh, that was their first win of the season. Dockery threw two fourth-quarter touchdown passes in that game. Uh, and Kaiser had 13 receptions for 181 yards. So they beat Tennessee State 21-15. They beat Virginia Union 35-10. Dockery had three touchdown passes in that game. He ran for another one. Kaiser had a 72-yard reception. That was his longest for the season. Then they lost to Nickel State, Virginia Tech. They beat Savannah State 50 to 14. The two teams combined for 1,119 yards. Fan you had 626 yards in that game. And uh, 369 for their opponent. Nolan. portion of today's game is brought to you by Jeep, only in a Jeep, and by Russell. Are you Russell material? Five, 5.52 remaining. Third quarter. Second and goal. For 
of Bethune. Here's the quarterback on the keeper. Russell. I'll tell you, he's like a magician back there. Is Green had to make the stop. He's pressing all the right buttons. I mean, he, this is a guy who can throw the ball. He can also pull it down and run it, and he can run the option. So he's multifaceted. That's extremely hard for a defense to stop. A walk-on from Riverdale High and Jonesboro, Georgia. Just making good decisions. Knows how to tuck his head, get the tough yard. So Think he, he's earned a scholarship? He's earned it. <laughs> <laughs> this spring. Don't wait till the fall. <laughs> The pitch back to the near side. Touchdown. Six down. Six points. Touchdown. And this one goes to Xavier Butler. That is only his second rushing touchdown of the season. But they take it in from three yards out. And they pull another step closer. And this play is all Jimmy Russell. Once again, you said he's a magician. He makes the right read. He takes the big hit, but he does pitch and gets the ball out there. And they're able to score easily to Xavier Butler. But trust me, Jimmy Russell paid the price for that touchdown. Five play. 77 yard drive they come right back right after fam you had scored and now for the point after touchdown is Cortez the kick is up and it's good, and it is good. That was a brand new 45 31 is our score 76 points between the two squads we still have 456 to go in the third quarter. And Charlie, that's what you need out of option quarterback. They took the fullback away. They attacked the quarterback. He made the pitch to Xavier Butler. Good blocking on the perimeter with the wide outs. One cut, he's in the end zone. BCC right back in the game. The band is playing. <laughs> I think we're going to have a good one here. Again, only two punts in the ball game, and they came early in the first quarter. I believe it was Fam Yu who punted on its second possession. Bethune Cookman punted on its first possession. They're the only two punts in the contest. And you can send those punters to the showers early because I don't think we're going to need them the rest of the day. Because if it gets to a fourth down situation, they go both coaches are going for it. And I don't think it'll ever get to a fourth down situation. You know, we spoke earlier about Bethune going to the one double-A playoffs a year ago. Mia gets an automatic bid to the NCAA, one of eight conferences to do. That, that does get an automatic bid. Three MEAC schools have never been to the 1AA playoffs. Delaware State, Morgan, and, a, and uh, Norfolk State. a t was the last one to win a 1AA playoff game. That was in 99 when they beat Tennessee State. FAMU in that same year beat Appalachian State in the first round. Troy State in the quarterfinals before losing. Oh, did he get it? I don't know. I don't think so. I think so. he knocked it out of bounds. Yep. Before losing to Jim Tressel, who's now the coach at Ohio State and Youngstown State. So, you know, FAMU has been there quite a few times in the 1AA playoffs. They won the first ever back in 1978 when Rudy Hubbard was the coach of the Rattlers of Florida A&M. So a break for FAMU getting that ball back because they were trying that one side quick kick again, well, trying well, to catch him off guard. Now there's some discussion. Discussion going on on the sideline as we look at the last scoring drive. They used 208 off the clock on a five play 72 yard. And they capped it with the three yard run by Xavier Butler. Five play 77 yards. Well, fam, you, I mean, their, their record isn't indicative of the type of team they have on the one double A level. Playing all those Division I schools, naturally they had some trouble. And whenever you're trying to make a transition up, you're expecting to have a bad year. But as far as being a one double A team, they're extremely competitive. Check out of bounds against the kicking team. The ball never touched the receiving team. The penalty is declined. We'll put the ball at the spot where it went out of bounds. First down. So it never touched the receiving team. It went out of bounds. So for that reason, that's the penalty, and they would decline it. They will just take the ball. Let's look at our deep trivia question, including 2002 and 2003. Bethune Cookman has defeated FAMU back to back three times. Name the other two sets of years. That's a tough one, Charles. No, it isn't. I'll tell you in a minute. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and here's a handoff. Well, I tell you, it's going to take a, a true Bethune Cookman diehard fan to know that. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 6 o'clock Eastern for Sports Night. At 7.30, see live high school football.
Since its launch in 2002, the SEC's education initiative has grown to reach over 1.5 million children, with over 2,000 schools utilizing this interactive software as part of their daily curriculum. Students love it, and research proves that it will increase test scores. Every school should be using Kids College. Motivation is a key to learning, and SEC Kids College is a proven success. The universities of the Southeastern Conference, equipping tomorrow's leaders today. Tuesday night is Georgia night on CSS. Tune in this Tuesday for the encore presentation of the Georgia Georgia Tech game starting at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. CSS, your source for Southeast sports. It's in I'm Paul. I'm Paul. I'm Paul. At Paul's Pest Control, you'll find over 60 Pauls, each one committed to the quality of your service. We're Pauls, and we're termite protection. From conventional termite treatment to Centricon, Paul's Pest Control has the most skilled technicians in the area to handle your termite problems. And we stand behind each termite treatment. When Paul's offers a service agreement, we honor it. For the treatment of termites or any other pest. Call Paul's. We'll get them all. Okay, I admit it. I have a pressing problem. It's my laundry. I cannot iron. I burn shirts. Dry clean only. Dry cleaning recommended. It's way too stressful for me, but Stewardship Dry Cleaners has helped me solve my pressing dilemma. They have excellent locations, wonderful service, and reasonable rates. They have solved my pressing dilemma. Oh, I need you. And they've left me time to iron out all the other little wrinkles in my life. Let Stewardship Dry Cleaners help solve one of your pressing problems, too. The series started in 1925 and 28th meeting. Here we go. Yeah. Right down the gut. That's it. Touchdown, Pompey! Rashard Pompey! His sixth rushing touchdown this year. And actually, that will count as a pass, so that would be the a sixth pass. touchdown. A shuffle pass. Well, that was a pass then. That's his first reception of a touchdown this year as a pass play. So they're going to count it as a pass rather than a rush. And that's six touchdown passes for Ben Doherty. That's just a great setup. They've been rolling Dockery out all day long. Of course, everybody's going to go with the quarterback rolling out. Pompey sneaks right underneath. Shuffle pass. He does the rest after he gets 36 yards. For the point after, Taylor. For the point after, to stretch the lead again. It's up, and it is good. Wow. 52. 31. 36 yards. So what a performance. We said right at the outset, Ben Doherty wanted to go out with a bang. You don't go out much bigger than that when you throw six touchdown passes in a ball. Yeah, he has a bazooka. <laughs> Blowing the lights out there. I mean, he, and that was a shuffle pass, but the other five were really touchdown passes. I mean, he, he's had them deep, short, the fade, stop the deep ball. He's done everything as far as throwing the ball today. He's had a great performance so far. Which is a record here for the Florida Classic. And he's a phys ed major, six... Three point, I believe, nine great point average is what he, he's averaging in physical education. There's Pompey, Rashard Pompey, who moved up to the eighth all-time leading rusher in the history of Bethune Cookman. Past Kwame Vidal and Michael Solomon. So congratulations to all these gentlemen who had such a whale of a ball game today. Four plays, 50 yards. And maybe a couple records broke today. I mean, he had a long kickoff return. There it is. 83 points on the scoreboard already. Just talking about that uh, Russell student athlete, Ben Doherty, with a 3.9 grade point average in health of his head. And you always love to see a guy that's productive on and off the field. Student athlete with student becoming poor athlete. So that's always great to have a guy who's a good student and also productive. Ricky Williams trying that left side. There he goes. There he goes. Down the middle. What a move. Great comeback. Behind, he will not get away from number three, and that is Will Judson 
who's a pretty good returner in his own right. Ricky Williams has been threatening to break the kickoff return all day. And I guess when you get eight tries, sooner or later you do bust one. <laughs> Ricky Williams had a 100-yarder against Arkansas Pine Bluff, the longest in the conference this year. That was good for 80 yards. And they tell you, don't catch the ball going backwards. Don't take it out if you're in the end zone more than three yards. Forget all those rules. This is the Florida Classic. Great cutback right there. He almost puts it in the end zone. Runs out of gas a little bit, but he sets his team up at the 20-yard line. And once again, Badoon Cookman answers right back every time FAMU scores. At the 20-yard line of Florida a &M. The pitch to Weems. He has some room on the outside. On the outside. Great block on the outside. Knocked out of bounds at the four. First thing goal. These Wildcats are tough. There's no quitting these guys. They come right back. They just need one or two turnovers. Stop something by the defense because their offense is really on fire from mid first quarter all the way on. Here's Eric Weems. Eight receptions, 101 yards today. He's been in the end zone one time. And let's not forget, he's the lead rushers when he lines up at this wing back position, but they've been doing the four wide outs and he's been catching a lot of passes today. And that's the second time he's run the ball. Good for 35. Coming to the opposite side. Oh! Touchdown. Butler. That's the second straight the rushing touchdown for Xavier Butler today. Butler had only rushed for one touchdown coming into the game all season long. Charlie, that was the collision in the end zone. You talk about being the bug of the windshield. Yeah. He <laughs> ran through the defender right there. <laughs> Great block by Reeves, by Weems, but Butler just comes around here and it's not going to be denied. Right here. Bam. Score <laughs> number nine. I mean, he was coming off the block. Corden Alexander, he just took the brunt of that blow. 2.56 remaining. We're still in the third quarter and we have 89 points up on the ball game, up uh, a scoreboard. And I can just about guarantee you with 97 points, is that the, the record for the most points scored? Well, that, total? Was, 90, that was a one-sided game, 97 to nothing. And that was Florida a and put those points up on the board. Whatever the most combined points scored. <laughs> the guy working the scoreboard has to pay attention today. He's he earning certainly his money. does. <laughs> <laughs> the point after is up. And it is good. 2.56 to go. I think we had a little bit of some movement. Yeah, about the still the offense. So they have to do it again. There you see Butler. He just lowers the boom on number nine for the Rattlers, Alexander. That's just smelling the end zone and getting in. That's, that's a great play. He should be excited. Turning the corner on that option play and just getting in there and not being denied. They probably have one of the best bands as far as in your seat performance. They really entertain the fans all day long. It's been exciting here with the two bands in the halftime. And of course, all these points scored. If you like offense, this is the place to be. Well, in 1997, there were 87 points scored between the two teams. And the kick again is good. So it's 52 to 38. That's 90 points. And he won that game 52-35. Right now, 97 to nothing was the score in 1960. But in modern times, when you talk about the score, you got 90 points up on the scoreboard with under three minutes to go. You have the guys over there doing push-ups for every touchdown. <laughs> getting the workout today, guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm glad they don't have to do it for every point. <laughs> be pretty bad. So, 2.56, the time remaining. We're in the third quarter. 52 to 38 is our score. The Cookman fans are once again excited. The band is jamming, as you can see. And that was set up by that 80-yard kickoff return. Ricky Williams. By Ricky Williams. As you look at that scoring drive, two plays, 20 yards. They had two onside kicks consecutively. One they recovered, one they didn't. So it'll be interesting to see if he kicks it deep or not. <laughs> And fam, you only has one guy deep, so I guess I'll just go kick it to him deep. Yeah, let's see what happens. That's there what they go. do. Stay in bounds. It may go, it goes into the end zone, so it's a touchback. It'll be brought out to the 20, and that's where fam, you will go to work. This is their second, third, I should say, 
possession of the second half. They've uh, gotten into the end zone on Doherty, 66-yard pass to Kaiser after they recovered a fumble. Make it 45 to 24. Then they got on the board with Doherty's 36-yard pass to Richard Pompey to make it 52-31. Right now, 2.56 to go, one away to end the season. You just need a big play by the BCC defense, a turnover. I, and I, I said earlier, this was Doherty's last college game. I forgot that he's got another game, game uh, to play next week against Florida International. Flag. I mean, this one comes from way outside. <laughs> that must have been the tight end holding. I guarantee you that was probably Ronnie Thomas or one of those receivers that was holding if he threw that. He tried to throw it right at him. <laughs> well, they call a face mask wow. against Patoon. That's something I missed. Look at Alvis and How. How you get a face mask way down there? Coach Wyatt, I'm with you. I didn't see it. <laughs> oh, I stand corrected. Yeah, it was. Automatic first down. I don't know if that would have been the 15-yard time. I mean, he did touch it, but he didn't grab on it. He seemed like he let it go pretty fast. Good eyes by the referee and a good throw with the flag. That is the 11th penalty of the game against Florida a and I should say Bethune-Cookman. Only four against Florida AM. 244 to go. Doherty has his team set. Gives the ball off. Pompey. Yes, Pompey again. Blakes another tackle. Gets out of bounds on a first down in front of the Bethune bench. Richard Pompey, who has 53 yards before that run. Now, Charlie, Bethune Cookman has a good defense. They've given up 52 points today, as you can see, the, the quick inside trap with Pompey. So you have to wonder the conditioning, all the adversity of the whole year. Is this a factor, the way they're kind of wearing down here late in the second half? Because they're a better defense than this, but guys are just, are just tired. It's been a very long year. They haven't been able to condition because of the hurricanes and all of the negative things. And right now, guys just can't seem to oh, get the play to make that one big game-changing play to get their offense back on the field. Here's the handoff again. Not much running room there. You know, we were talking about the one double A playoffs. We already know that Hampton is going to represent the MEAC in the tournament or the one double A playoffs. It's just a matter of who they'll play. They'll find out tomorrow exactly where they're going to be seated and who they'll play. There's an outside chance that South Carolina State could be the team that gets the at large bid from the Mideastern Athletic Conference. They'll be the second straight year that they've sent two teams, Bethune and uh, North Carolina A&T went a year ago with A&T being the uh, automatic bid because they won the tournament or ch a conference championship and Bethune Cookman went in as the at-large team South Carolina State with their win today by six over A&T 34 28 that game in Charlotte gives them an opportunity let's see what happens meanwhile there's a shark he almost fumbled that football but he got the first oh, down down to the 30 yard line yes it is and that's what they need. They need a turnover. But Don Cookman is, is playing tough defense. Guys are grinding it out, but they need one type of spark to get this ball back. Hampton won today. They beat Savannah State 58 to 7. They've scored something like 50 some points or averaged about 50 some points in the last four or five ball games. The only game that they didn't score that many points was against Bethune, but they still came out victorious after they lost to Delaware State. I'm trying to get my man Luke Williams to ranked them a little higher but he just refuses he <laughs> he thinks they should a fourth rated team everybody else thinks they're the second rated team but anyway that that's beside the point then delaware state beat howard howard was coming along had a pretty good season going for him they lost their closing game of the season that was a green stadium in washington dc and Le al levan who came in as the new head coach of uh, delaware state this year had his team rolling toward the end. They came out victorious against the Bison, 32-13. They've had some real big wins this yes, year. Yes, they beat have. Hampton also. They beat Hampton. They beat Howard. Equipment violation, number 31, Bethune Cookman. Bethune Cookman is charged a timeout. They charge him a timeout with an equipment violation, so they only have one timeout left. Now, Charlie, talking about the playoffs, it would be real nice to see South Carolina State get into the playoffs. I mean, this is a team they've only lost to Hampton. 
and to Wolford, which is two teams that are ranked, I think, in the top 17 or so in the uh, in the one double A poll. So I think South Carolina State winning the day will be deserving of that bid. And hopefully they will get the nod because I think they can be competitive and win a game or two in the playoffs. They're 23rd ranked and uh, Hampton comes in 12th ranked. Division two playoffs in HBCU action. Albany State representing the SIEC came out victorious over Arkansas Tech today. 42 to 28. So congratulations to the Golden Rams of Albany State. I think they have a chance to go deep into the playoffs. They have two running backs. I mean, both, I think, are over 1,000 yards. They have some big-time rushers, and, and they're playing well right now. Of course, Albany State went into the playoffs, the number two team in the nation. There's Alvin Wyatt. Well, he, the referee, Adrian Hill. Well, Coach Wyatt is upset because of, and they're charging him a timeout because of an equipment violation. And I think that's on uh, number 31, Nick Collins, but he's been playing the whole game. So if it was a violation, you would think it would have occurred before a minute 22 left in the third quarter. So he wants an explanation of exactly what was called and why now, why at this point in the game. Well, he's looking at the umpire, Lamont Mahone. He's really giving him the blues. I believe he's the one that they have thrown the flag. You're right. I mean, was he wearing the same equipment all game long? You know why? You know, why you, now? If you didn't, if you didn't bother with it early. Why bother with it now? Especially at a critical time in the game. And most of the times, the referee would, would give the player a warning, like, "Hey, you need to take that off" or something like that, before they just, you know, throw the penalty and, and make them lose that timeout like that. That's a crucial timeout. Down by uh, 14 points in the third quarter, you need every timeout. So Hampton, Delaware State, South Carolina State, and Albany State all win today. Big games. As far as the MEAC is concerned, South Carolina State stays alive with their fingers crossed for a 1AA playoff bid. First and 10 from the 30 yard line. Here's Sharp again trying to turn the right corner. Sharp down to about the, sharp on the, carry. the 35, make it the 26 yard line gain of about five it'll be second down and five we're down to the final minute of the third quarter and I was wondering at some point if FAMU was ever going to start running the ball because they've been having a big lead at least a 14 point lead the whole game and still doing the no huddle offense and passing the ball now it seems Use like they're the clock, more, right yeah they're more into clock management at this point now that they realize that BCC is going to score every time they score yeah don't score too quickly May come back to haunt you. Doherty. Whoa! Great defense downfield. Who got the hand in there? Number. That looked like a touchdown all the way up I until think the Nick last Collins. second. I think Nick Collins got his hand in there. Boy, he plays some great defense, doesn't he? Yes, he does. I mean, he's a big player. And he was the heir to the. Well, actually, oh, actually the driver just, just dropped, dropped it. it. Yeah. Kaiser had that one. That should have been six. That should have been the seventh touchdown pass of the night for Doherty. You see him. Doherty knows. <laughs> yeah. He, I thought Collins got his hands on. Of course, Collins was the heir to Rasheen Mathis, who is now playing with the Jacksonville Jaguars, having a pretty good year. Of course, Quinn Gray, a graduate of FAMU, is uh, a quarterback on that Jacksonville Jaguar team. Yeah, and actually, uh, they're, they're doing real well this year, too. Can't get up and run with it. It's a first down, though. That's the most important thing. Get it complete. Yeah, fam, you have a couple of Miller. alumni in the NFL. Of course, you have Earl Holmes playing with the Detroit Lions right, right now. First right. Started off with the Pittsburgh Steelers. 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 Bob Hayes, Bob Hayes, Bob Hayes, of course. The bullet Bob Hayes. Oh, man. Gorham. You talk about some people, who, or I should say, Pompey. You know, Bob Hayes, you talk about the end of the third quarter. We'll come back and we'll talk about some of those famous alum from Florida and M after this. Let's go down to Mark. Charlie, I was able to find out what the fracas was about on that last Bethune Cookman penalty. He claims that he, the officials that is, claimed that they had been warning Muhammad, the linebacker, about keeping one of the snaps on his 
chin strap loose. And apparently in the heat of the moment, he dropped a profanity-laced word with, that begins with an F, and the official threw the flag on him, and uh, it incensed Coach Wyatt. Back up to you, Charlie. Yeah, well, some things you have to be careful, especially in a ball game like this. 14-point game. We're starting the fourth quarter. 15 minutes left in regulation. We're the FAMU Rattlers having a great time at Disney's Animal Kingdom, hunting down some wildcats. They set up in the eye on this, the last play of the game, and here's the snap. Hand off to the tailback. Peterson tries the right side. Wow, what a hit! But he stays on his feet, and he's broken to the outside, and it's wide open. Touchdown! Give him a touchdown! Hello, I'm Fred Gaines. And I'm very proud to say that I'm the president of Florida A&M University, the nation's number one historically black university. We're putting the latest technology in place, contributing and graduating the nation's top professionals in architecture, pharmacy, journalism, business, education, agriculture, engineering, health sciences, research, and just about everything that makes a real difference in our world. And welcome back to Florida Classic 25. Let's check back in at the happiest place on earth to find out who won the first ever Florida Classic Alumni Challenge. The challenge was made. The teams have answered. To win the Walt Disney World Florida Classic Alumni Challenge, it takes something special. BCC has shown courage under pressure. Bam Yu has answered with inspiration. It's now time to watch these two teams go face to face at Main Street, USA in the Magic Kingdom in an old-fashioned showdown. These teams are holding nothing back. I've never seen such a display of school spirit. These are times when legends are made. The time has come to choose a winner. Both teams have used the four Walt Disney World theme parks covering over 30,000 acres to their advantage. With displays in courage, kindness, and sportsmanship, it is time to announce the winner. I am pleased to announce that both teams are worthy of the honor to be called the Walt Disney World Florida Classic Ultimate Alumni. Congratulations! All right, as we start the fourth quarter through three quarters, 929 yards between the two teams, which betters the mark of 879 that the two teams set back in 1999. That was that game, I believe, or that they had 70-some points in that contest. 1999, the final was 63-14. <laughs> Man. <laughs> and family won that one. Good play. Knocked away defensively. Good defensive play, getting that ball up up and doing Cooper just hanging on and, and fighting and scratching and not giving up on the play. As we look at our third quarter stats, I talked about the 900 and some yards, 542 for Bam U, 387 for Bethune. The, the one stat that sticks out is the three turnovers by Bethune Cookman. Leading to 15 FAMU points. No flag. Fourth down. The Summers on the defense. The defensive backs of Bethune Cookman are really stepping up. Like you say, Summers on the defense, and that's that's not the other Summers. It's two. They're Summers brothers from Jacksonville, Florida. Both good players, wide receiver and DB. 71,153. The announced attendance here for this one. We're going to get a field goal attempt by Wesley Taylor. This will be a 35-yard variety, which would make it a 55-38 ball game. This drive started at their own 20. High snap. Kick is up, almost blocked. And it is no good. And it's no good. It's a good try. 
So he's missed two today, he missed one from 17. And this one from 35. But he's made most of his extra points. He's made a field goal. So first time kicker. I, I think he's doing a good job. He's holding his own. From their own 20 yard line. But down by two touchdowns. They have the ball. First down and 10. If you look at the young man, Wesley Taylor, freshman out of Riverview, Florida. Coach up in the booth with the light shirt on there to your left of your screen Billy uh, Jones. Ladies and gentlemen, we would like to thank you. Thank you so much for the attendance today. I would not 71,000, 71,000, 153. Give yourselves a big hand. A big hand. Thank you for your support. Pass out the flat. Those, that, that's almost like a counter pass. Throws it out the flat and the receiver comes back inside against the grain to try to create some space and distance. Exactly. If he can ever make that cut and get upfield, he wants to get back inside and back to the sideline. So it's, it's a sharp play. It's an easy pass for the quarterback, but it's a play that can break for big yardage if it's blocked right or if the receiver makes somebody miss. Game of five, second and five. Jonathan Summers on the reception. Russell on the option. Pitch back to Weems. He gets a little breathing room on this near sideline and stays in bounds and gets up to the 30 one yard line and gets a first down. So Eric Weems continues to add to his total. That is his third rush of the day. Now, Charlie, I think this is where the game gets interesting because now we're going back to the options, which Madonna Cooper knows how to do well. That's what they're more familiar with. And you can see here Weems, the lead rusher. I mean, he's been catching a lot of passes, but when they run the option, he's the wing back who actually is usually the recipient of the pitch. But they've been down 14 and 21 points, so they've had to pass. Down 14 with the ball, they really can run the option or pass. It's not like in a hurry-up mode where they have to go five, four wide receivers the rest of the game. One of the things you do know is that, and you have to keep in mind, is Bethune only has one timeout left in the contest. This one goes out of bounds. Jimmy Russell has been so exciting. I don't know if you just want to put him in the box and say we're going to run you know, the option of the wide bone. I mean, he's been successful with the four wide receivers, spreading things out, just, you know, wild candy, let him go. And I may just stick with that. There's your buddy old Barry Wagner on the sideline. Barry Wagner played at Alabama A&M. Played in the World League. He was a World Bowl winner, and Iron Man, and everything else. He's Mr. World League. Yeah, Mr. World League. And, uh, he was a big receiver. I mean, he put 18 catches on my alma mater, Alabama State, when I was there. So he's a very good player. Russell, plenty of time. Summers is out of bounds, unfortunately. Oh, they call it a catch? One foot. They must have called that a catch. Wow, that's great adjustment by some boy. That's a great adjustment and a great catch. And yeah, he looked like a center fielder spinning around to catch a, a, a deep fly ball going over the fence. But he did a great job of staying in bounds, apparently keeping one foot in bounds and making the adjustment here, a complete 360. Let's see. No. He was not in bounds. That left foot looked real close to being in bounds. The referee had a great view of it. Look at the left foot, Charlie. That one right there. That looks like it's out of bounds. <laughs> he tiptoed it. <laughs> that looked like it was out of bounds to me, but anyway, it doesn't matter. And Barry Wagner thinks so also. Yeah, he, he's he a, thinks it's bounds. He's, he's a receiver. He's a receiver. Yeah, what do you, you expect him to say? <laughs> There's a missed tackle. Still on his feet. There's Wings. Wings. Weems knocked out of bounds. Tough kid, real tough runner. He's the lead rusher, so you know he can run after the catch. So once he catches that ball, you have to actually put a hat on him and physically knock him down because he's used to running in the option offense. If he gets on the perimeter with the ball, he can make things happen. So Eric Weems with the big play after the catch. Making a guy miss one. And he works with Two. little space. We don't have a lot of sideline there to nifty. work with. Yeah, he's nifty. <laughs> First down and 10 at the 19. 1331 to go. You tell the defender you couldn't tackle me in the phone booth. I'm just too good. Too nifty for you. The previous play was 35 yards, and they had a 15-yarder. 
There's 50 yards between those two plays. They got him all the way down to the 19 yard line. And I think when FAMU gets the ball back, they're going to be wide open again to try to put points on the board. I don't think they're going to do let's run the clock out thing because they're realizing now that BCC can score at any time. So they just better try to match scores and, and just try to outscore them. Well, there's a timeout on the field for somebody. That There's a timeout. There's an injured player down for Bethune-Cookman. And we'll be back. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 6 o'clock Eastern for Sports Night. At 7.30, see live high school football. Tuesday night is Georgia night on CSS. Tune in this Tuesday for the encore presentation of the Georgia-Georgia Tech game, starting at 7 o'clock Eastern, 6 Central. CSS, your source for Southeast sports. It's just been neat to, to be able to make so many great relationships. There's so many different cultures, so many different walks of life. Everybody's on the same level, you know, no matter rich or poor. You may think you're different. You know, you may say, well, no, nah, I like this, they like that. But in the end, you're all here to do the same thing. Put them on the football field and they're equal. And you're always with your teammates. You know they're going to get their job done. You trust in them and they trust in you. It's a tight family. You know, I think that's what makes this game great. NCAA football, a lifetime of opportunity. There's something you should know about me. I'm cold. I'm calculating. I get what I want. If you get in my way, I'll wreak havoc upon you. I can leave you weak, limp, twisted, confused. If you want to live to see tomorrow, you answer to me. And you answer quickly. I am a stroke. Learn to recognize a stroke and act quickly. Time lost is brain lost. The man who was taken up on the play, just Vernon Edwards, reserve offensive lineman, back up center for the Wildcats of Bethune. He's back off the field on his own power. And, you know, this is why it's 12th meeting versus Florida A&M, either as a player when he was at Florida A&M or as a coach. He's, he was 0-4 against FAMU as a player. He's 2-5 and 5 as a head coach since 1997. He was a player between 1966 and 69 at Bethune. Right now it's second down and nine for the Wildcats at Bethune. Here's a, Russell wants to go to the air. Got plenty of room on the right side. Takes off inside the 10. And right at the 10 is where he's knocked down. He'll be a yard shy. It'll be third and one. Third down and one. Clock running. 12.44 to go. He started to the left. Everybody defensively went left. And then he reversed himself and had some running room around to the right side. So it brings up third down. That was the option pass. They've been running the option a couple times, and they come back with the option pass. So, Pam, you, I think, has seen every play that the Wildcats have today. They're really empty in the playbook. This well, it's your last game of the season. If you're Bethune Cookman, you may as well let it all hang out. Here's Butler, who has two touchdowns, and we'll see if he got the first down. It was very close. Butler's a hard runner because it didn't seem like he was even close to getting that first down. He was able to sneak in there and get a yard or two, maybe. The official is going to measure, see if he gets it. You know, we started to talk about some of the famous alum that came out of Florida A&M. Uh, we talked about uh, Bob Hayes, who played for the Rattlers between 62 and 64, went on to win a couple of gold medals in the 64 Tokyo Olympics in the 100 meter dash and he anchored the four by 100 meter relay team he played for the Cowboys and the 49ers and he should be in the Hall of Fame definitely he should be in the Hall of Fame uh, also you had Willie Gallimore school's all-time leading rusher over 3,500 yards Quinn Gray who's quarterbacking the Jacksonville Jaguars you talked about Earl Holmes Pittsburgh and the Cleveland Browns Althea Gibson Tom Oliver Andre Dawson Marquise Grissom and the mayor of Detroit, Kwame Kilpatrick. Oh, Kwame. Yeah, all, yeah. all former uh, alumni of Florida a and Fam, you has just done a great job of educating the people of Florida for an extremely long time. But doing Cookman College also, a lot of great athletes, just a lot of great citizens who are doing just terrific things 
on and off the uh, football arena and sports. And don't forget about Jake Gaither, their legendary coach who won 23 SIAC titles between 1945 and 1969. That's domination there. Yes, it is. Fourth down, Bethune going for it. They're 0-1 in this game in fourth down conversions. This will be the second opportunity for them to convert a fourth down situation today. This is the biggest play of the game so far. Down by 14. Russell. Rodney Johnson looks like he has it with room to spare. That's Rodney Johnson on the carry. Plenty of room. For Rodney from Lake City, transferred out of, out here from the University of Cincinnati. Good job by Rodney. After the first contact, he was able to spin and get that first down because when he was first hit, he didn't have it, but he spun off and was able to fall forward for a yard or two and move the chains. Look at the total. Well, that's the second there, time this year that Bethune has been in a game in which the two teams combined for over a thousand yards. I should say Fam U, not Bethune, but Fam U. Here's the reverse. Option reverse. And we go in easily. Easy. Jonathan Summers with an eight yard run. Goes wide and empty in the playbook. They're running every play that they have. They're not going to leave anything on the field. Great example of perseverance. These guys just keep coming back. Every time family tries to put this game away. They have a flag. I don't know if that's excessive celebration or not. But here Summers getting the big catch. 35 yards. No, it's against Florida a &M. That helped set up this touchdown. And it's 52 to 44. Will we say 97 points? Oh, yeah. We it's 96 <laughs> right now. It's one point away from... We're trying to break 100. <laughs> Thanks, <Sean. laughs> I think we will. I can just about bet. After the play, personal foul, defense, number six. The touchdown is good. 15 yard penalty will be enforced on the kickoff. 11 08, the time remaining here in the fourth quarter. 52 to 44 is our score. And Fab U was a little conservative on offense on their last series. I can bet Billy Joe is going to come out slinging his ball around and trying to put more points on the board. Bam, you 395 yards passing as the point after. And, is good. and that makes it 52-45. Let's go down to Mark Gray on the sideline with Commissioner Dennis Thomas. Thanks a lot, Charlie. Here is the Commissioner of MEAC, Dr. Dennis Thomas. And Commissioner, I know as a former coach, this has got to be a game that if you were on the sidelines, it'd be wearing you out. It's a great game for offensive coordinators and offensive coaches. Defensive coordinators are pulling their hair out trying to figure out what's going on. Well, while we have you here, let's get your state of the season to this point. Football season 2004, in your words, how did it go in the end? It was a stellar tremendous year. The competitive down to the wire. Matter of fact, uh, South Carolina State is co champ with Hampton because they beat North Carolina ASG today. But Hampton will represent us in the one AA playoff because they beat South Carolina State in the head-to-head -head competition. And we are still lo lobbying and hoping that maybe the Bulldogs might get an invite as well, aren't we? That's exactly right. Uh, Lynn Thompson, uh, director of athletics at Bethune-Cookman, is on the football committee. And, you know, he has tremendous diplomatic skills, <laughs> negotiating skills. So, so hopefully he can get another MEAC team in the, uh, in the uh, playoff. And before we close the book on football, talk a little bit about basketball season. Well, basketball season has been uh, phenomenal thus far. Uh, we are very pleased to, to have uh, South Carolina State men beat Penn State. And uh, that, was, that was a big win for the conference with, with a non-conference victory like that. Thanks a lot, Commissioner Thomas. Now we'll turn it over to the athletic director of Florida A&M, Dr. Joe Ramsey. And Doc, let's get your assessment of this game to this point. I think it's, uh, it's a fantastic game. As uh, Dr. Thomas was saying, uh, very little defense is being played for some reason. But uh, both teams are playing uh, uh, fairly well, and we hope for a positive turnout. It's been an up-and-down 
series of months at Florida A&M. You guys are now officially back in the Middle Eastern Athletic Conference. Let's get your thought about coming back in, competing as a full member again beginning in 2005. Yeah. Yes, we are happy to be back with the MEAC. Uh, a lot of good competition in the MEAC. And um, uh, the competition is at our level at this time. Uh, being in Division 1A uh, is not the greatest thing in the world if you're not ready for it. But uh, we'll be there one day, but uh, we're really happy to be back in the MEAC. And we're glad to have Florida A&M back. It's Dr. Ramsey, the athletic director at Florida A&M. Let's go back to what's proven to be a great finish, guys. All right, thank you very much, Commissioner. Dr. Ramsey, Pompey picks up the first down. Started at the own 31 yard line, gets it out to the 45, a 14 yard gain for Richard Pompey. Pompey, 17 carries, he's close to uh, 90 yards for the day. He's got 88 to be exact. He had the long receiving shuffle pass, which counted as a, a touchdown pass and almost 40 yards, so he's been real productive. Ben Doherty, who already has five touchdown passes, Still in it, quarterback, a mix up in the backfield where the quarterback and Pompey ran into each other. And the defense was right there to make sure they didn't go any further. Number 56 and 57 for Bethune in the presence of Kirk Blaine and Rodney Hughes. Both linebackers were there. And that's what Cookman needs. I mean, this is a mix up. They try to run a little counter play. Pompey runs into the quarterback. Big tackle for loss. Now you're dealing with a second and long. Cookman, this may be the break they need to get this ball back only down by seven. They haven't been in this position in a very long time in this ball game. Alex Saunders, the uh, big defensive lineman, number 99 for Bethune, is uh, down on the field right at about the 44-yard line. A little shaken up right now. Jimmy Joe, who's the offensive coordinator, is over talking with Ben Monk with Doherty and we'll see what happens here with 10-14 to go. We'll take a timeout. 52-45 is our score. Tonight on CSS, tune in at 6 o'clock Eastern for Sports Night. At 7.30, see live high school football. Get in the game with CSS for live college basketball action every week, all season. With CSS, the madness doesn't have to wait till March. Tune in this Saturday as Chattanooga plays Ohio State starting at 8 p.m. Eastern. There's something you should know about. Time. It's the most precious commodity. So much to do, so little time. Let stewardship dry cleaners save you time to do the things you really want to do. You can count on stewardship dry cleaners to make your clothes look their best. And with seven locations in Tallahassee, there's a stewardship dry cleaners near you. After all, you've got better things to do with your time. Visit stewardship dry cleaners today. If you're currently in the market for a car, truck, or SUV, then don't buy new. Usually, as the first owner of an automobile, you'll suffer the largest depreciation loss. Instead, purchase a late model pre-owned automobile from the collection, Prestige Motor Car Collection, and save thousands on depreciation. Here at the collection, we stock only the finest late model cars, trucks, and SUVs, so you'll get a like new car without new car depreciation and save money. Come see the difference at Tallahassee's pre-owned specialist. Score here, 10-14 remaining. Charlie Neal, along with Eddie Robinson here with you. And Eddie, you said you thought they would come out throwing the ball because they don't want to, to, to let Bethune catch up, but they're coming out running it. That's fam you right now. Hey, Dockery has six touchdown passes. There's no sense being conservative. <laughs> Throw the ball, keep it open. Let's try to get the 100 points combined by both teams. Well, I'll tell you, it's uh, fam you's ball right now, but, you know, they've got a long way to go. Of course, Bethune Cookman trying to stay in this ball game. They don't want to lose that third game in a row and they're right in the ball game right now it just depends on what happens and as you see Doherty working from the shotgun right now there he is hands off and he's going to keep the ball and nothing doing for him that time that's a third second and 16 play it'll be third down third down for FAMU Ben Doherty doesn't run that much. He has run today a couple times. Six times to 25 yards. Ball at the 39 right now. 
third and 16. Springing out to the left, trying to get some running room, still on his feet. Flag is down. Now we may probably have holding down there by probably number 78. Probably Dan Parrish. That's the call, holding against the Ratners. Watch 78, the top of your screen here. No, that wasn't him. Might have been 65 then. He, he called it on Sharp, the fullback. Right. <laughs> well, I had somebody wrong, but I, they're going to take the penalty and move them back. So it'll bring up third and about 28, 26, and move it back to the 30 because it's in fourth from the spot of the infraction. Here's the quarterback of Paris's today. Doherty for 395 yards. And Russell, remember, he didn't even start the ball game. He came off the bench in place of Gerard Rucker. And he's thrown for 325. Six touchdowns for Doherty. That's a record here in the Florida Classic. They fake the blitz, back off. They keep the ball on the ground. You think they're being too conservative? Too conservative. This guy has thrown for six touchdown passes, 52 points in the last two possessions. They've run the ball way too many times. Let this guy open it up and throw the ball. This will be only the second time today that FAMU has punted the ball. They did it on their second possession of the ball game, and it'll be only the third punt of the ball game between the two teams. Alvin Wyatt's team, boys, they're only down by a touchdown. Remember, they came back and snatched a victory a year ago with nine seconds to go. Eric Weems on the reception that gave Bethune-Cookman the win over the Rattlers of Florida and m They are thinking repeat again this year. This game is building up to a great finish. A lot of points scored today. I mean, both teams are up and down the field. And FAMU defense is nothing to make me think that they can stop with Dune Cookman on his next possession. So if I'm the coach for FAMU, Coach Billy Joe, I'm just trying to score as many points as I can and I'll score these guys because my defense can't stop them. And while we're talking about Florida and M and got a moment, you know, three members of the Florida and M alumni have been nominated for the Pro Football Hall of Fame. We talked about Bob Hayes needs to be there. He wasn't one of them. Ken Riley, the defensive back from the Cincinnati Bengals, who Finished with 65 career interceptions. Henry Keller well, Martin, man, the offensive tackle. The, the Raiders from 74 to 86. Sure and of course, Nate Newton, man. the guard for the Dallas Cowboys and Carolina from 86 to 99. All former Rattlers who have been nominated for the NFL Hall of Fame. Two others from the MIAC hey, nominated man. also. Yeah, Harry Carson man. and Donnie Shell from South Carolina State. So hopefully... Those gentlemen will be successful in getting into the NFL Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now, all those players are deserving. Of course, Harry Carson is another name that really stands out. Not a fair catch call for, but he stands out as a player who's been productive a number of years on Super Bowl teams, and he definitely should have that vote. Time out on the field, 8-15 remaining. Hey, did you know an SEC soccer player runs over five miles in one match? Wow! A softball team does over a thousand loads of laundry a season. Holy cow! A football team's fans can eat over 40,000 hot dogs at one home game. That's a lot of hot dogs. There's more cool stuff to find out at seckids.com. Read about your favorite teams, play fun-filled games, and check out way cool stuff like how you can become an SEC champion. This site's incredible. seckids.com. It's awesome. It becomes like a friendly battle for the whole game. You got to keep it to a level where sportsmanship is still there. You know, when the running back's running as a wide receiver, it's my job to secure the air, so I got to block the cornerback. You know, I'm trying to be nasty, physical. I'm trying to put him on his back, and then he gets up and say, hey, you know, that was a good hit. And I say, all right, you know, I'm coming again for you. You're athletes, you're warriors, but at the same time, you're sportsmen. NCAA football, a lifetime of opportunity. There is really only one boy, one girl, one tree, one forest, one ocean, one mountain, one sky, and one simple way to care for it all. Please
Please visit earthshare.org and learn how the world's leading environmental groups are working together under one name, Earthshare. One environment, one simple way to care for it. 8.15 remaining in the fourth quarter. FAMU by a touchdown. Let's go down the bar. Charlie, I don't know if I've ever seen a more dramatic shift in emotion on the sideline. Where FAMU had all the confidence in the first half, that energy has been replaced by apprehension. And what was a dead sideline for, for the better part of two and a half quarters has a whole lot of life on the Bethune-Cookman sideline. It is amazing how the swings of emotion have changed today. Back up to you. And Jimmy Russell has his team poised first and 10 at their own 40-yard line. They have scored every time they've had the ball here in the second half. And they're still on their feet. Here's Rodney Johnson with a first down into FAMU territory at the 46-yard line. Rodney Johnson running well for the Warriors of the Bill Cookman. That's his 10th attempt rushing this afternoon. Now they're back into the four receiver formation. Not being conservative at all. Going for it. It's an inside hand off. Great run by Rodney Johnson getting down here. First down and 10. The ball resting at the 46 of Florida a &M. A 35-yard field goal. They fumbled once and then three straight touchdowns have put them within seven of Florida A&M. Here's Rodney Johnson again. Rodney cuts it back and gets another first down to the 29. This offense has been on fire since Jimmy Johnson has came in. I'm sorry, not Jimmy Johnson. <laughs> Jimmy Russell is coming to this game with that long pass. Whole second quarter, the second half, and you can see Rodney just going downhill. You have to wonder if fatigue is starting to set in on FAMU's defense. Well, you said that earlier. Run. You said that earlier. You know, they were being too conservative, number one, and then Bethune with these long drives have uh, can take a toll. It really can. Especially when you're going from chasing down the quarterback to also playing the option. That's extremely hard. Rodney Johnson again. Keep him pretty much in check that time. I tell you what, they're set up for the play action pass after those three hard runs. Up the <laughs> they're setting them up, huh? They're setting them up. Coming up with the stop for the Rattlers of Florida A&M with Brandon Finney, senior linebacker out of Miami. See Mr. Finney there, number 59. Keep in mind, Bethune Cookman has never beat FAMU three times in a row. And they've beat them the last two years. So this would be unprecedented if they could win this third game. And it would keep them at two games over 500 for the season. Here's Rodney Johnson again. It's the Rodney Johnson show on this drive. And don't fix it Rodney, if it ain't broke, Charlie. That's right. And Rodney has another first down. So Rodney has carried the ball just about every play on this drive. This will be the fifth play of the drive coming up. And it's been all Rodney Johnson bringing it down the field. And I'll probably would give it to it again, to give it to him again. <laughs> this drive, remember, started at their own 40-yard line. They've driven down to the 12-yard line, and he's picked up 48 yards on this drive. Four carries for Rodney. Now the big guys up front are doing cooking an excellent job. But he's not getting touched until he gets into the secondary past the linebacker. Both teams with 25 first downs, and it's there the he back option. And here's the touchdown. touchdown. is up and is good. 52 all. We've got a new record. Points scored in this game. 104 points. 52 apiece. First downs are even at 25 apiece. 555 remaining. Boy, there's a lot of fives up there. A lot of fives. Last year was a nine-second defeat for FAMU. Russell with his first touchdown rushing tonight, but he's carried this team on his shoulders. He threw an 88-yard pass to Woodbury for their first score.
school. Herbert had a kickoff return. And Weems on the opposite of 10 yard run. And back into it. Martez with a 35 yard field goal. Then Butler a three yard run. Then a three yard run by Butler again. Summers an eight yard run. And then Russell with the run that time. Charlie, I don't know how you can keep track of all those scores. I mean, it's, it's been mind boggling to me. All I know is okay, that was just two, 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 two. <laughs> That was just one side. <laughs> possession in the on their last possession square kick picked up and down to the 20 is all Mr. Dips is going to get I think in big games sometimes coaches have to take chances do things out of the norm coach well, Wyatt, Alvin Wyatt certainly did didn't oh he? yeah two onside kicks he's, he's doing the, 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 the high kick now the, the blooper to try to get another turnover the option reverse plays He's coming out with Jimmy Russell with the four wide receivers there on a wishbone team. He's doing everything he needs to, do to give his team a chance to win this game. Maybe look at that last drive by Bethune. We're talking about the running back, Rodney Johnson. Out of the 60 yard drive, he carried the ball four times and picked up 48 yards. So every play, they averaged 40, uh, 12 yards a play going down the field. And it ended with a 12 yard run by the quarterback, Jimmy Russell. Set up by a great fake to Rodney Johnson. Everybody bit on the fake. You knew at some time they were going to come with a fake and either pass it or throw it to bootleg with the quarterback. Great ball, great call by the coach, just setting it up, going down the field and getting it in the end zone. Now we have a tie game. Alvin Wyatt is the offensive coordinator for the Wildcats of Bethune. Pete Adrian does a great job on the defensive side, but they've given up 52 points. They gave up more points in the first quarter tonight than they've given up all season. I think at this point, you're just trying to win. This is the Florida Classic. You don't care about how many points right. you're giving up or the stats or anything. You get a W, it tastes good. Doherty throws incomplete. all day except when they tried to run the ball and if the receivers hold on to the pass that's important also second down 10 receiver and Larry Summers covering number 28 Jonathan Summers his brother has had a pretty good day and here's Larry's been a pretty good day on the defensive side of the ball yeah, both of those brothers extremely good players and remember one of the previous scoring drives for Bethune or for FAMU was aided by a couple of pass interference penalties going down the field summary for this contest. The Russell game summary. Doherty, six touchdown passes. A record for the Classic. And 271 return yards for Bethune-Cookman. And 104, 104 points that eclipses the previous high of 97. And that 97 was scored by one team. This one was scored by two teams, 104 points. First and ten. They got him. Coming in with a big sack. Travis Rowland coming up 
from the secondary with the safety blitz. They have been blitzing Dockery the last couple plays. Excellent job of actually getting the board back to the ground. It was Bethune, look what it's doing now. Early in the game, they were playing a little conservative, playing 8 to 10 yards off the wide receivers. If you look now, they have 10 guys along the line of scrimmage. Everybody's playing tough, bump and run coverage in your face with one safety. They moved Nick Collins, the cornerback, and they're just saying, hey, Dockery, you're going to beat us if you can. downfield fourth down or is it third down third down third down you know we talked about the fact that in the game with savannah state they combined with savannah for 1100 yards they had 626 right now fam you has 540 in this game more importantly under five minutes to go in this contest look at the coverage downfield he tries to run an out route the receiver slips but he's making the break before him good coverage downfield Nicholas has now moved to, to the uh, to the safety position. Just great coverage all around. I mean, these guys are playing bump and run, man-to-man -man coverage. Ten guys on the line of scrimmage. I love that. One free safety. They're just going to make the quarterback beat them. Third and 17. Eight of 14 and third down conversions for FAMU today. Doherty throws it down the middle. Double coverage. Double point for first down. Big catch for Ron Wright. Section of the afternoon. Ron Wright. Great catch. The freshman from Washington High down in Miami. Good for 25 yards on a third and 17. And the ball is in Bethune territory with 4.33 to go. Huge third down play. He ran a little out and up. A little stutter step on the defensive back and was able to get inside up the middle of the field. Is he talking trash? <laughs> Just a little. <laughs> Doherty. They're coming with the blitz again. And he picks up the yardage back to the line of scrimmage because he would have been lost, would have lost yards had he not gotten back to the line. Cookman is rotating the defensive line and they're coming in with three fresh guys and, and, also, a, and also another cornerback. So I think they're going to keep this, this same strategy, just playing man coverage, press coverage, have one safety, make Dockery make some quick decisions with the ball. Pete Adrian is the defensive coordinator. He's got some pretty good schemes going again. Now they just put in Bobby Williams, number one, that free safety. They took out Nicholas Oliver. He's a freshman also. So they have it speed. Secondary speed is what they're looking at. And this is a first down to the 23-yard line of Bethune Cookman. And on the end pattern, and Kaiser, who's had a big day also, that's his sixth catch. He's had over 200 yards in receiving so far this afternoon. That was 17 on the reception. Aubrey Parrish. And I believe that's his first catch of the day. Man, so that's the 10th different receiver that Ben Dockery has hit today. That's not a pretty pass. <laughs> Parrish is a freshman from West Palm Beach. with 312 remaining in case you just joined us it started out with Doherty a 53 yard pass to Kaiser Doherty a 14 yard pass to right it was 13 nothing after the extra point was missed Russell then an 88 yard pass to Woodbury made it 13 to 7. After one, it was 21 to 7 when Doherty hit Warren. After they recovered a fumble with a nine yard pass, it was 28 to 7. Fam you with Doherty's five yard pass to Morgan. Bethune came back on Herbert's 95 yard kickoff return to make it 28 14. Fam you stretched the lead again on Taylor's 23 yard field goal to 31 14. Weems 10 yard run pulled Bethune to within 10 31 21 with 50 seconds left in the half Gorm's two-yard run made it a 17-point ball game at halftime 38 21 in the second half Cortez hit a 35-yard field goal then it was Doherty's 
66-yard pass to Kaiser. Butler's 20-yard run made it 45-31. Doherty then to Pompey, 36 yards, 52-31, but then it's been all but doom. Butler with a three-yard run, Summer an eight-yard run, and Russell a 12-yard run, and we're all tied at 52. No 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 great halftime performance in between all those touches. I ran out of breath to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a game full of highlights on offense and defense and just a great atmosphere for a great game and it's been a big 25th anniversary classic so far 25th anniversary as you said the silver anniversary and I'll tell you when you have these silver anniversaries and golden anniversaries and all the platinum anniversaries big games <laughs> <laughs> you've got to come with your a game right yeah, you got to be ready to stay a while. I mean, the fans that are here, man, some of them left early for the tailgate. They're probably trying to get back in the stadium with this finish that we're going to have. Alvin Wyatt's on the field complaining about something, and I have no idea what it is. Coach Wyatt will not be able to talk in the morning, man. He's leaving it all on the field just like his players. He's coaching his heart out. Real gutsy performance by his team. To 10. The blitz is coming. Flags are down. They whistled. They blew the play dead. I think Dockery did a little acting on the end. Little John Stockton <laughs> kind of fell down and tried to get him an unsportsmanlike conduct late hit. Five yard penalty. So that kills the play. Somebody moved prematurely up front. See there? <laughs> it's a good try. <laughs> Six touchdown passes, and he's an actor also. He's trying for seven now, 3.12 to go, but you can't give Bethune too much time on that clock. They've, they've scored just about every possession in his second half. They have. Here we go, man coverage with one safety. And the blitz. He has time. He's going to be... Everything. They brought the safety blitz. That's right. And the young man you were talking about that just came in at Devin Richardson. I should say uh, Bobby Williams, rather. Number one. He came in big time and also. That's a great swim move. Right? Kirk Blaine right there. Coming on the outside. He faked inside with the swim move to the outside. Just a big hit on Dockery. He's lucky he held on to the ball. You know, one of the top linebackers in the conference a year ago was a young man named Stephen Baggs. Kirk Blaine kind of took his spot, and he's going to be something to be reckoned with in the next couple years. You watch out for number 56. Both of these teams with a lot of good Actually, young he players. won't be back at this year because he's a redshirt senior. <laughs> well, this is a third and 28. See if they bring the pressure again. Delay. Five-yard penalty. Back him up. Play clock ran out on Doherty and the Rattlers. BCC can stop them on this third down. They're going to get excellent field position. They'll force them to punt. Exactly. I'm sure they, if they don't get it on this third down, they're not going to go for it. And it, of course, they're way out of field goal range. They've missed a couple of field goals this afternoon already. And that is a, they missed a 17 and a 35-yard field goal today. That's the punter. the field goal kick. I'm sorry. Damon Miller is the punter. 39. Remember, That's this 49. Is the, this is the field goal kicker's first game because the other kicker quit midweek. And so if he does have to kick a game with a field goal, <laughs> wow, what a way to have your first game in. Well, he hit a 23-yard earlier. But he missed on a 12 and a 35-yard. 2-11, the time remaining. We could be looking at overtime. These 71,000 fans got a treat. A lot of people hit it for the exits early, but you never leave one of these games until it's over. Last year was a prime example. FAMU was leading with nine seconds to go, and Bethune came back and won the game. Now there's some discussion going on over the sideline with the chains. Coach Wyatt right in the middle of it again. I mean, he's, he's coaching. <laughs> He's earning his check today. I think
think the down mark is wrong. They got should be third down. They it's got a two. Down on. two in second down. Wow, second down. They had third down on it earlier. Oh, okay. That's what it is. It's third and 28. Oh, the penalty. See, they moved. That's what it was. When oh, they changed it to third down, they, it was a penalty. Remember, they never the play never ran. They whistled the ball dead. Downfield by Kyle Herbert, who has a kickoff return for a touchdown. That's a good job by the referees because had they not changed it back, it, they would have lost it down. They would have had the punt right now, but now it's third down. And those Bethune Cookman defenders, I mean, I know they've given up 52 points today, but in this fourth quarter, the coaches really challenged them. I mean, they're playing man coverage, bump and run with one safety in the middle of the field. So in those sideline patterns, you get no help. You're on your own. And these guys are really stepping up and making plays. They've batted down a lot of balls that Dr. B has thrown their way. It is third and 33. it go in a second. He's coming back with it. Wow, Nick Collins out of bounds. Big play Nick Collins. <laughs> of all people, if that's the man that in a second, that's his sixth INT of the year. And you're talking about the air apparent to Rasheed Matthews. This guy's a player. He's been playing safety most of the game. When they went down to the press coverage, he moved the cornerback. And so he's showing his versatility and his speed. They stepped out of bounds at the eight-yard line, but it's the first turnover of the game. Here's the foot. The left foot went out of bounds right at the eight. Official right there to mark the spot. Just how dirty he is because they've been bringing pressure all day long. And that's Bobby Williams, the freshman defensive back to safety. And when they brought him in the game, he's just been blitzing every play. So now Bethune with a minute 49 to go with the ball at their own eight yard line has a chance to move down the field and win this ball game. The last drive took 220, the previous 334, and the previous, those were 80 yard drives. So they, they're a long way. They're at their only eight, only eight. They're 92 yards away. But they have a, you know, they have to get there. Now remember the overtime rule. If you score the college overtime rule is each team gets the ball at the 25, they'll select an end zone at which they will play two. And each team will get an opportunity to punch it in from 25 yards out. Should it go beyond two overtimes in the third and consecutive overtimes, anytime you score, you must go for the two point conversion. You can't just kick the extra point. So, a minute 30 is the time remaining. We've already played four and a half hours. <laughs> we have a tie ball game at 52, and we're looking at possible overtime. <laughs> Anything you want, we'll give it to you. I mean, <laughs> why not? <laughs> so it's going to be a big light bill for the stadium today, having these lights on this long tonight. <laughs> Nobody could have expected this game to bring to you what it has today. I mean, 52 points by each team, possibly overtime. So who knows how many points you may score in overtime. particular ball game 67 69 passes between the two teams attempted you'll see why we've been here this long tonight on CSS tune in at 6 o'clock Eastern for sports night at 7 30 see live high school football
See Talkin' Sports with Danny Sheridan Sunday nights on CSS. Watch as Danny and special guests review each week's games and look forward to all the big games of the upcoming week. Don't miss your chance to talk sports with Danny Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern only on CSS. In my opinion, Billy Joe is a great coach. I mean, win, lose, or draw, I think he should be back at FAMU next year. He was competing against Division I teams, so you really can't hold them accountable for the record this year. And the one double-A teams that they did play, they were very successful against. The big thing that the FAMU Rattlers are upset against is they lose this game and be three in a row to the Wildcats. Right. Here's Sharp trying to get to the first down marker. I don't think he got there. He's about a yard, a half a yard shy. That was a third and two. He got maybe one and a half. It'll bring up a fourth. This is a tough, inches. tough decision, real tough decision, because you have an inexperienced kicker. But on the other hand, you know Bethune Cookman as Jesus Cortez, who's very accomplished. What are they going for? Yeah, you I mean, have to. And, because the, and they, the thing they're thinking is, well, if they don't make him move on defense. And uh, we, we want to keep the drive alive. But if not, we'll go on defense and see if we can do something. Yeah, I would go for it, too, at this point. With the kicker that you have, you have no choice, really. Doherty, the quarterback, he keeps it, gets it. First down, Florida and M. Clay Clock was running out on him also. I would expect Coach Wyatt to come back with the pressure on Doherty once again. There's no sense letting this guy sit in the pocket. Well, we don't know if he's going to throw it. <laughs> They may decide to, to keep it on the ground. Like you said, if that blitz is coming, if you get past that first wave of the defense, it's you're six points. Yeah. You're, in the, you're in the end zone. But they haven't been getting past that first wave lately. <laughs> no, they haven't. So down to the 15. From the shotgun, Doherty works. Rolling left throws into the corner. What a great throw out of bounds. Out of bounds. Kaiser came up with the catch, but he didn't have a foot down when he made contact with the football, and it was Nick Collins covering. Watch. That's a great matchup. Nick Collins covering Kaiser. Kaiser had a couple good catches this game. Just stretched out a little bit too yep. far. Couldn't foot, get that knee down. Foot never touched down. If he could have just drug the foot. A little tap. A little toe tap. <laughs> well, that's that guy, that big white stripe, once again. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't miss. <laughs> A little toast. Well, Collins is showing his versatility. Nick Collins playing safety in the beginning of the game. Now he's going to corner. I'll doing tell you a great job. The post is open. That's interference. No flag. Did you think so? It was close. <laughs> well, I guess the officials say we're not going to decide this game. Hey, just let him play. Just <laughs> let him play. 52 points apiece. Just let him play. He was open early. He's running the seam route. The quarterback looked outside first, and he saw him late. See, that's face guard. See, the player, the defender is not playing the ball. He never even saw the ball. What do you think? That's a very good point, Charlie. <laughs> He got his head back around at the last second, so maybe that's what the referee is looking at, but I would let him play. I'm not going to throw a ticky-tack foul. I'm going to let him go at it. Third down. Third and ten. Oh, there's a flag. And there's a flag, and we got a reception. And the reception is to... Close to the first down. To Rod Miller. Well, it's a 15-yarder. So if you decline it, you get better yards than accepting it. So it'll be half the distance, probably. Let's see. It's still an automatic first down. That's what you want is the first down, regardless of anything else. Right. You want the you want the downs. So if you get the first down on the catch, I think you take it take it on the catch at the four at the four yard line. If not, then you take That's the penalty. Defense number 23. That penalty is declined. Result in a play. So, so what they did was they decided to take the play rather than a half the distance because it puts them closer to the goal line. And now I believe, no, I thought it was a timeout. Bethune substituting on the defensive side of the football. Like fam, you was going with the big backfield. They, they lined up in that T formation, three guys across. First and goal at the five. 
see if Bethune can hold right here. Play clock. Oh! Mix up in the backfield. The quarterback still on his feet. And he gets it down to the two-yard line. That was a mix-up, and he still made something out of nothing. Well, you had the running back trying to call a timeout because he saw the play clock going to zero. Quarterback realizing you only get one timeout in overtime, so he continues to play. Turns around, and the running back is looking back at the referee. <laughs> See if you can see, the guy 32 is still trying to call timeout. Right. That's sharp. <laughs> so at that point, you just take off running. That's right. Try to save yourself. And save the team. <laughs> you don't want a penalty for calling the timeout you didn't have. It is second and goal second at the goal three. The and make it the two. Sharp has it. Sharp stop by number one. Fumble balls on the ground. The third has it. The same man who got the penalty called on him lines up with the football. That's Kyle Herbert. He has a kickoff return, 95 yards for a touchdown. And now he comes up with a big. Was it 22 or 23? Let's see. Number one made the hit. That was Bobby Williams. And Bobby Williams, the freshman who didn't come into the game until late. 22. He's made a couple of good plays. Ben Ballard comes up with it. So you now the Bethune, replay. Bethune gets, gets the ball at the 25. Now keep in mind, Bobby Williams, 6 feet 190 freshman from Miami, Florida. He literally just gave his body up. He just blew up everything. Coaches say when you're blitzing from the outside like that, don't stop until you break glass. And he just went up there, took out the blocker, <laughs> knocked the ball out of Sharp's hand, and that's, that's the hugest play of the game right now. Because all Bethune-Cookman has to do is, of course, just score any way possible, kick a field goal, and they have a real good kicker. So, yeah, so I mean, it's, it's like the NFL, you know. Let's get down there, kick get a field goal, and let's go home. Go home. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and we're all tied at 52. We're in the first overtime. Bethune's first possession of the overtime. Never won three straight games in this series. They're trying to break that mold today. Here's the quarterback, Russell. Two hands on the ball. Jimmy Russell down inside the 20 to about the 16-17. Where it'll be. Second down and two. Now, not looking to next year too fast, but they'll have Jimmy Russell and Gerard Rucker and a couple other quarterbacks coming back next year with Bethune Cookman. But Jimmy Russell has really stepped up and had a great game today. Not even starting coming in in the second quarter. He's completed a ton of passes, touchdowns. He's ran the option perfectly. He's done everything well. And so, it, where does he figure in next year's game? Here's the option back to the right side for the first down. And that's all they were trying to do is get that first down. And there's a young man who scored a pair of touchdowns already today, Xavier Butler, on that option. And they're right in the position they want to be. That is the Wildcats at Bethune. Trying to go to six and four with a win today. Five and three in the conference play. Well, this is not a conference game, but they would be six and four overall. Sam you would drop to three and seven. The worst record for Billy Joe since coming to Bethune. But he had the toughest schedule in the nation, Division One AA. Jimmy Russell brought down with a loss back across the 15 to the 16. Right here, you don't want to turn over, of course, but you don't want any negative plays. You want to make this field goal as short as possible. They actually lost a couple yards on that play. So if in doubt, just give it to the big quarterback and get a couple of positive yards. Just inch closer to that field goal attempt. Billy Joe, seven and three against Bethune, lost the first meeting that he faced him in 1994. Straight ahead, touchdown.
This week, Comcast delivers the hits you want on In Demand. Jim Carrey stars in the romantic comedy Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Based on a true story, Dennis Quaid and Billy Bob Thornton star in The Alamo. One crazy idea, one insane fortune. Don't miss Jack Black and Ben Stiller in Envy. All this week on In Demand Pay-Per-View. Delivered home by Comcast. She walked right in, and right away I knew I'd better have some answers. You got the stuff, she says. Yeah, I got the stuff, says I. I got everything that a person who is deaf, hard of hearing, or speech impaired needs to use a telephone. What's it gonna cost me, she asks. I say, no charge, sweetheart, not if you're qualified. And was she qualified? If you're qualified, call FTRI today. They've got the goods. Yes, your source for Southeast Sports.